Hey, hi, hi. Good evening, all. Welcome to the Good revision evening. session. Yeah, well, welcome to the revision session for quiz one. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, sir. So I think. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. I think. Uh, good evening. Yeah, I think let's wait for a couple of more minutes. So maybe some more will join. Okay, so I hope you are learning well for the quiz, uh, quiz one preparation, and uh, so in the today revision session uh, we will discuss the we will try to discuss all the topics uh, till week four, uh, using some sample question uh, collected from the previous uh, quiz exams or some are new. Uh, so today I need your participation also uh, and your effort uh, to solve the questions. So let me share my screen. Sir, also, if we possible, we can discuss some more questions. If she have doubt. Yes, yes, sure. Uh, if you okay. have any uh, question, you can also ask in between. Okay, sir. Okay. okay. So, uh, first thing, please join uh, this peer deck session. Open the joinpd.com and enter this uh, code WWFXFZ. Open the joinpd.com and enter this code WWF. I'm also sending uh, a link for this in the chat box. So can you show the code? Yeah, one second. We have already sent the uh, link in the chat box. You can also use that. Uh, otherwise, you can see the this code uh, on the corner, right corner, right top corner. You can see WWFXFJ. Yes. And website link is uh, joinpd.com. So today I have approx uh, 26 questions. Uh, uh, I just uh, collected these questions to cover all the topics till week four. Uh, so okay. we will start from the week one and two. Basically, week one is basic uh, Python based. So maybe sub question may be related to the week one. Uh, the main topic will start from the week two. Okay, so please all join. Uh, okay, let's see how many of joins. So there is no. Okay. okay. So we have to join using our uh, student ID, uh, IDM student ID. No, you can join any. So this is the live actually. Okay. Okay, just uh, open the joinpd.com and put this uh, code WWF XFJ. You will share this PDF also, sir, whatever the slide you are showing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we will share. Okay. Sir, so I have used the link in the description in the chat box. Yeah. Okay. So this is skin is visible on your skin? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, fine, fine. Sir, I just wanted to ask, like, uh, will uh, when will we have the session for week five? Like, five. After okay, next, quiz... uh, in next week, we will conduct uh, all the sessions which are pending. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Good, great, great. Okay, so maybe you, uh, some extra sessions we will conduct. So this week we did not have uh, week five sessions. Yeah, <laughs> so actually, those in calendar uh, actually, we had one, uh, but uh, yeah. I think in that session also, sir, uh, did revision only. We scheduled yes, for the uh, week five open session on bad Wednesday, but that is converted to the uh, for complexity, 
Yeah, yes, sir. That yes, will sir. help for revision. Thanks. Yeah, okay. Sir, sir, yes. Previous session, you told that you share the PDF uh, of the slides you discussed on the coding part. Where did you share, sir? Solution of lab coding? Yeah, yesterday, just last session, you discussed that. I will share this slide. No, no, last, no, session is, uh, last session last is can be done, taken by the no, no, master. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. It was, it was Java. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, sir. Okay, so let's start. Uh, we will start from the first question. Okay, from week one. Uh, so just try to solve these questions with me. Okay. So for every question, we will take uh, two to three minutes. And after that, we will discuss the solution. Okay. So this is the first question based on uh, here one code is given. Actually, the purpose of the code is to return to check the uh, prime number. Okay. Here we are giving one input and we are checking that this is a prime number or not but there are some there is some error in this code okay so find out the input where this uh, this incorrect code is returning a wrong answer there was a revision at the previous session also the yeah, previous session or uh, Conducted on the opens uh, on the bed nest actually where the Vaskar is discussed the complexity how to calculate the complexity in details. Yeah, 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 sir. Someone was asking in the chat. That was not the revision section actually. Uh, so some students were asking for the complexity discussion. So I think um, there are many students uh, still not joined this peer deck. Those who joined the late uh, in this meeting, uh, please open the join. Uh, you can see here. Open this join pd.com and put this code. And try to solve each question with me. So for this question, uh, four options are given. So uh, to solve this type of question, just uh, check the code once and put the all option value one by one in the code and check that where the this code is returning an incorrect output. Where where is the wrong thing happen in the code? So this question actually I taken from the lecture slides. I think this code is also discussed in the week one lecture. I think you did not notice during the lecture video. So there, there was a mistake in at the place in this code. Uh, we have corrected this mistake in the slides and GitHub notes, but in the video that mistake is uh, uh, still there. Okay. So out of so we just have to select the option, right? Yes, yes. So what option are okay. coming on your screen? Uh, sir, multiple choice now. Yes, yes. Just yes, select sir. the answer. A B C D. Hmm. 
Okay. So out of 49, 37 have already given the answer. Let's check the answer. So response. Oh, multiple solution. Do not change the answer after looking my screen. Okay. So the highest uh, correct answer is 21, B6, C13, and D2. Is the most answer given by the all. Okay. Come on the question. Now, why, why are you looking that is the incorrect answer? So because it is a, a, it is a uh, prime number, but it will return false. Hmm. Returning false. <clears throat> Here is a function think... that takes a positive integer as an input and return true if the number is a prime. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so if, if we are putting uh, a two value inside this function, so if and so this if condition is not true, no, it will return okay. false. Uh, in the second condition, what is the range value? So two comma n low division two. So when we will pass the two value here. Hmm. So are you two thinking that one, this sir. yeah this loop will run? No, no sir, no, no sir. sir. It will throw an error. It will terminate early, sir. Sir, it, sir, it will throw error, error or it will return true. Yeah, it will return true for two. But why not why, sir? error? Because either after two. Uh, 2 comma 2 for the loop i in range 2 comma 2 right so why 2 comma 2 no uh, 2 comma 1 i'm putting n equal to 1 uh, i'm putting n equal to 2 so after so, calculating it will become 1 right mm, so yes it will become 2 comma 1 okay but then so that is not a valid integer valid range for the loop so that loop will not not run not run. and our control will uh, go outside the loop and in last line return true that oh, will execute okay it will not throw error no no it will not throw the error sir but, but uh, the if block is earlier so it will return false value now sir so where uh it, it's for, for less the two. Than two it's for it less is, than two uh, so this is n is less than two now so uh, yes. here we are passing n equal to two yes. this condition is now also not correct yes okay so, so for yeah for n equal to two it will return true hmm. true so because it's not less than two. two uh, so first first two. condition is not satisfied. Okay. And second line number four is also not a valid range. So that will also not run. And and we will move to the line number seven and then it will return true. Okay. That means uh, for n equal to two, this uh, function will return the correct output. Okay. So that means option A is not correct. Mm -hmm. B, when we are passing 3, so 3 is correct or not? According to the question. So 3 will also return yes. true. Three true. Will is correct. True. Yeah, so that is also correct. Mm -hmm. 3 is also correct because uh, for 3, this function will return true. Okay, similar uh, for the same uh, things. Uh, 3 is not, not less than 2. And for the same range, 2 comma 1. Okay, and this for loop will also run, uh, not run, and then the last line will return true. Now check for the four. <coughs> four is a prime or not? No, sir. No, no not prime. Now check that what this code is returning. It is true, returning. It is returning true. Yeah, it is returning true. True. Okay. So because of that, uh, and same for the you can check for the five. So for five, it will return false. Yeah, uh, it will return. It will return. To return true, true, also. true, true not true. false. True, true. true, true. true. Yeah. It will return true. Okay, so that means true. option A, B, D, it is returning a correct output according to the prime uh, definition. But for four, it is returning a true. That is not mm. correct. Okay, yes. sir. Okay, so option C is correct for this person. Mm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So this is the minor mistake. Uh, mm. okay. We thought that uh, if uh, two, mm. two comma one would, would be. Yeah, uh, through an error, so that's why. No, no, practice on the editor <laughs> to, to remember these things. Okay, so now this is the second question. Uh, 
I think you have learned this complexity in the many live sessions. So these are the very simple questions. You should try to give so the you correct answer. You can take a mock test like complexity questions. So that matrix question to be get it. Uh, matrix question. Yes, in mock test. Uh, uh, uh -huh. We will discuss. We will discuss also. Okay. So after completion of this, we will also discuss the mock if you have any doubt. <clears throat> okay, so try to give the uh, give the answer for this fast quickly. Uh, these are very basic question and dis discuss in the many lab sessions. Oh, 40 response received for this. Okay. So answer should be check here. Okay. Hmm. So yeah. Whether we should write big O n square or only n square? Uh, for this, uh, we can also write n square. But uh, in the, in general, we represent the complexity with notations. Okay, so use the big O. Big O, big O is good. Hmm. N square, n square. Okay, n square, n square. Yeah. N square. If, if, if it is a numerical type question, then we have to write n square or big O n square. No, no. It's a, if this type Numer of question we generally not ask for in the uh, numerical box. It will be in the yeah. MCQ. MCQ, MCQ. MCQ. Yeah, if this type of question generally ask is a MCQ. MCQ. Okay, okay. Okay. Fine. <clears throat> oh yeah, correct. Most of the answer are correct. So this is a simple. We are using a two nested loop in the uh, question, and both are running for the n. Okay. So. The complexity will be yes. order of n square. Okay, now move to the next. <clears throat> so this is also a similar type, but this time our j loop is also depend on the i value. Okay, every time our j is starting from the i, not from the zero. So I hope this type of uh, scenario you, you have already seen in some sorting algorithms. If you remember. Insertion sort, sir. Yeah, insertion sort uh, as well as uh, open Even selection, selection sort. sort. Yeah, selection sort is also. Yeah. The only difference is I start with I plus one, right? Mm -hmm. So until I can I ask doubt? Mm -hmm. So uh, in week three, sir, I'm not able to understand the oops concept, sir. Oops concept? Yeah, sir. For example, sir, and uh, even you were showing some uh, stack and queue programs for mm -hmm. graphs and other thing. Uh, I was not able to understand because of that self uh, oops co and that other okay. stuff. Uh, basically, we are not using uh, in uh, oops concept in deep. We are simply using the class and object things. That's, that's what I'm not able to understand, sir. So what I did, I uh, I understand BFS and DFS, but using simple list and simple that pop algorithm and okay. using that. But I I'm not able to understand using that oops concept. Okay. And sir, can I ask why why you guys are using that concept when we can run that code within few lines and we can solve using list? So uh, you are talking with respect to which algorithm? Uh, DFS and BFS, for example. So where we are using uh, class in DFS and BFS? Uh, in lectures and I think I saw in, I saw in live session also. A, a live coding session also. Sir, he he is saying that we are creating in a the class of a queue or a stack before implementing okay, okay, a BFS okay. or DFS. Yeah. 
Okay, okay. Why we are doing that? Why can't we just simply use list and perform all the functions? So that's uh, depend on you how you are implementing stack and queue. So this there is no restriction. Uh, okay. See uh, if you are uh, if you are able to implement without uh, class, so that is also correct. There is no problem with this. So, but the problem is the question that are asked in graded assignment, practice assignment, everything is using class and object. And yeah, this. but you should know the concept. <laughs> That's the problem, sir. What to do now? Uh, okay. So, for, uh, actually, we we are not using any advanced concept like oh, um, overriding. Well, yeah, please, uh, Rika, can you mute yourself? Yeah. Okay. So. We are not using any advanced topic of OOPs, so I think you should uh, revisit some OOPs, uh, basic OOPs, which you have already learned in the Python course. Yeah. We are I using do. only that concept, that level concept. Mm -hmm. So how generally we cre uh, create a class and how we uh, can create an object for that class? Uh, I did, sir, but uh, it will be good if after this you can just explain any yeah, one okay, program. Okay, okay. Okay, how okay. how it's working by showing any one example okay okay sure, and sir. just any one program sir okay okay sir. thank you so much yeah so uh so just a uh, small doubt like in ope's we don't need to i understand the concept of uh, why we are creating tasks and all but mm -hmm. in opp we can directly use the list right as uh, list you can use your yeah Yes, also, no, sir, we don't we have can... to create a class of Q or stack in OPP. We are directly uh -huh, you can this. use. You can use. Uh, this, uh, so Python is provide these uh, all the basic operation. Uh, you can we use we can also list. import libraries also, no, sir. How you can okay. use? Uh, I saw some videos. They they were importing uh, import. Those uh, those things. things you are using uh, in the uh, graded assignments. Those library you are using. Same uh, library you can use in the OPP exam. No, in. In the graded assignment, we solved using OOPs, but can we use libraries in OPP? I am not aware of this OPP library. What is this? Uh, no, no, I am asking, can we OPP, use OPP, Python OPP. libraries in OPP? Ah, you can use, you can use. For example, uh, in live lecture, we were creating the class of Q stacks and everything, mm. but Python itself gives a library of Q. Mm, you can use. So we can do, uh, simply import yes, the Q yes. library, no? Yes, you can use DQ. I think there is one DQ. Yeah, sir. Hmm. Collection and many libraries, sir. Okay. Okay. So for this second question, uh, I just check the answer. N square. Okay. N square. N square. Log n. Okay. N n square n plus one. Okay. N square. N square. Okay. N is also there. Square log n n. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So if we are asking the complexity, okay. So uh, here we are asking the complexity. So complexity we generally denote in the highest order of n terms. So if we ask for the function, what is the function uh, for this uh, code? At that time we can represent the function uh, using n into n plus one divided by two. But for complexity, just simply return the highest order of n which we are getting through the function so for this code uh, so for each value of i okay if we start from the i from 0 to n minus 1 so first value is 0 so for, for uh, first value j loop will uh, run from 0 to n when we are moving to the second loop of i we will uh, we will uh, where the i value is 1 then that means j will j loop will run from 1 to n okay same things for the i equal to 2, our j loop will run 2 to n. So every time our one, uh, so j, our j loop is running uh, one step less uh, compared to the previous uh, iteration. Okay. Sir, how less, sir? Sorry. Okay. One second. Yeah, I'm opening the notepad. Yeah, so for i, uh, our i range is 0 to n, and we are uh, going inside j equal to i to n. 
multiplied Yeah, so this is the outer loop for uh, yeah. which I am considering for the i. Yeah. Okay, and this is the uh, nested loop j, which is starting from the i value every time. Yes. So for the inner loop, it will be n into n plus one by two or okay. order n square. Okay. Right? So I have uh, moved to the next question. I am explaining uh, your here. Okay. Yeah. So this is the first loop i. Okay, which is starting from zero to n, correct? Yes. Okay, and inside this we are running j equal to i to n. So this basically i n minus one, and this is also n minus one, okay. correct? So uh, this is the outer loop, and this is the inner loop. So for each value of i, this j loop will run completely. Yes, sir. Okay, so when i equal to zero, this j loop will run total zero to n minus one steps. So total number of steps are n. Yes, uh, that okay. I got. It will be n into n plus one by two. Hmm. Yeah. Right. And uh, shouldn't it be multiplied with n again because of the outer for loop? No, why we need to multiply? And actually, we are adding the steps. We are adding the steps for each value of i. Okay. Okay. So here, if we are taking uh, i equal to one, then n minus one. When i equal to two, then n minus two. And we are adding all these steps. So there is no need to multiply again. When we are sir, adding all these steps. Sir, I had uh, used different approach, but I am not sure it is correct. 
so what I did was for first loop I considered n. I knew it was, uh, and and for each iteration like it was from zero to one. So I said like it is one o of zero to one. Then uh, then it will be o of zero to two. Then o of zero to three, and so on. Uh, I have this expression that o of n minus one, o of n minus two, and I kept uh, because n minus one or o of n is same. So if I sum up, sum it up, I will get o of n, and uh, the Previous loop has also O of n, so if I take the because uh, there is nested loop, so it will be n squared. No, no. So, uh, so if you are representing in that way O of n, okay? Yeah. And, okay. So O of n minus one. Yeah. And in the last step, you are representing O of one. Yeah. Uh, no, O of zero. Actually, n minus n. Okay, zero. Yeah. Previous step is O one. Yeah, yeah. I will add up all these O's. But uh, because n is the, so I think there is no need, though no need to require this ma to mention mm -hmm. this o with every steps. Here we are calculating the steps which uh, our code is uh, running. Yes. Okay. So yeah. no need to. This o is representing to the overall complexity for the code. Yeah. Right. Now, uh, for my understanding, I did because like I I can I am just taking one part of the code and I'm saying that okay, this is the time complexity for that. Okay, okay. So you are yeah. just saying that uh, if you are considering this line, for yeah, 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 right. And you right, are calculating right. the complexity for this. Mm -hmm. This is the yes, answer. yeah. At every step, what will complexity? Yeah. And then I am over. So uh, why are you writing o n minus one here? So you can also present because uh, it, will be, it will be open. Yeah, right, right. So directly we can use uh, n n minus one, right? Hi, directly you can use no the steps. Right. Oh, oh, step. Step. Yeah. Sir, yeah. Uh, the thing is that I understand the direct method. It is clear. Just to for fundamental idea that you know how I can approach. Mm -hmm. so I know that n minus one will be n. There's no need to write it. But to have a clear understanding of this, uh, I did write this. I just want to check in. Like maybe uh, since I'm getting the answer, is it also correct in a way? Of course, I can write n n minus one, and then that is better. And I understand that, but I approach like this. Okay, but this is additional steps you are using. Yeah, I'm I'm aware of that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, just to answer her question, she was saying right, and to and multiply and this. I think this is the same thing she is referring to. Mm -hmm. You are also adding all the steps, no? Inside yeah, the yeah. Same yeah, yeah. you are doing with, uh, but yeah. you are representing with O. Yeah, I'm representing with O. Mm. Yeah. Uh one. Uh, I think so. Okay, so some uh, for example, I'm giving one example. Okay, so tell me what should be the answer for that, sir. One one <laughs> question. Can't 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 we can't we do this because this is a nested loop. So mm -hmm. both are the of the order of n. So n into n is the n square. So directly we can't say or uh, another problem. No, no, no. Also... You 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 have to check the uh, relation. How the value are running uh, for the outer loop or inside loop? So what happened for uh, this loop is running from zero to uh, n minus one, and second loop is running uh, for example log n times. Hmm. Okay, for each value of i. So n log n. Okay. So at that time you have to take care of this. Okay. Okay. How it is running? You have to check. Yes, so sir, you have to check that how the loop is uh, dependent on the input terms n value. Okay, if we are uh, calculating the complexity in the terms of n, so check that how how is the this i loop is incrementing for this n, and same for the no, j. That, that I got, that I got, but if we can prejudice that it is, it is visible that it is of the order of the n, the the loop will run for the order of the n. Then we can directly multiply, or you have to calculate all the steps and then make the series sum. You can directly yes. multiply if the f both loop are running for the same range. Then you can directly ah, yeah. multiply. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. okay because but, uh, only, only order, well, only order is required, so we can do that. If yeah. it is not log n or other other type of thing, right? Mm. Got it. Thank you, thank you. Okay. And so, uh, so, you have the previous uh, person. Uh, so, for example, if we have a one code. Yes. Okay, so there are some blocks, yeah. serial blocks. Okay, mm -hmm. so some code are written here, some code like in that way. Mm -hmm. So for this code, is complexity is big O n square. Yes. Okay, yeah. big O n log n, and this is log n. 
okay and this is uh, big o and q okay so same way which you are using from the previous question so mm -hmm. how you you will calculate this co the complexity for this whole code if uh, all of them are independent then it will be n squared because uh, there is a thing right if i write n squared uh, it will be something c times n squared if you do it up to 10 q you will come to that same conclusion right like n squared plus n log n plus log n and there is n cube right oh mm -hmm. then n cube will be the answer simple n cube sir n cube right n cube is the answer no yeah, yeah so, right. uh, so that means we are just taking the highest order of n yeah highest order, highest order of, of n. n so why yeah. you are not using with the previous question why are you adding the uh, no no, no. Steps? Uh, i just did because it was my intuition right because i I always usually what I used to do is like n square and n log n, but I just said because C wanted to understand uh, that is why I implied that. I mean because if I write O of n square, it is simply means C of n square, right? And if you just take common, then it not, doesn't mean anything. It will be n square, and we we mean the in, when we say asymptotically, then uh, we mean the highest power. In in our case here, n cube. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to consider O. Uh, just for her clarification, I tried to mention this. Yeah, so because of that, I'm saying that now if we are considering that all instructions are performing sequentially. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in that case, 0, n minus uh, 1, n minus 1, if we are considering that all are uh, sequentially performing. So mm -hmm. in that case, we, if we will choose this uh, highest order, so th that will remain the same. Yeah. Okay, so right. so no need, to no need to consider in that way uh, if yeah. we are uh, checking the complexity for this nested type of loop condition. So yes, just count the steps and then mm -hmm. after that you use this big O terms. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. otherwise it can also create a problem. So so for example, yeah. some steps are uh, written like one line, two, three, four in that way, sequentially are written and yeah. each steps are taking big O n steps. Okay, and you are writing in that way. Yes. And it is given like for 4,000, uh, 1,000 times. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you will add this, so how you will calculate the complexity for that? By just looking at it, right? <laughs> the highest power. Highest power. So, yeah. okay, so uh, for this type of nested uh, loops, while loop and for loop, so no need to uh, consider this big O for each step. You can just count yeah, the steps right, and then right. after conclusion of the overall complexity, then written with the order of n. Yeah. So can we move? Sir, but in the previous question, it was kind of complicated. Like it was not, I, by putting it like this, I was able to intuitionally, like I had, I could create some intuition out okay, of okay. it. Sometimes it is useful, but uh, in most cases it is not. It's so true. all things are clear yeah. in your mind, so you can yes, sir. use yes. Okay. yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So can we move, sir? Uh, yeah, this one. 37, I think we have discussed. Yeah, so this is the next type of uh, question. Um, so how many? Okay, 2 to the power n. Log n, log n, log n to 2n. So complexity generally not written as a 2n, okay? So written with the notation. Don't use the uh, constant term with the complexity. Uh, log n, log n, n. Okay, log n, log n, n. So again, multiple answer are there. Yeah, okay. So for this uh, fourth question, uh, now check this, uh, how the value are increasing. Okay. And how this value, which we are increasing inside the while loop and how it is uh, related to the input n. How many steps we are reaching till n. Uh, we are uh, multiplying i uh, by 2 to the power k steps by yeah. n. Or we can say we are dividing or greater uh, than n by 2. No, we are not dividing. No, 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 not dividing. So we have to the reach complexity, I am saying. For the complexity, I am saying. For the uh, every step, we are dividing n by 2. Just like uh, we are multiplying i by 2. Yeah, so here we are starting from i equal to, I think uh, something is missing in the question. Okay, i equal to 1. Okay, fine. Uh, so, if we are starting from i equal to 1, every time we are multiplying by 2. Okay. Here some value is given. For example, this value is given 1024. And we are starting from i. So, 1 in the next step, what will be the value? 2. 
and then four. Why why it should be from one? Why not from zero? So I is given as one. I is given one. Given? I is initialized as one. Given one. Ah, oh, initialized this one. Okay. okay. And inside every loop until uh, when i is less than equal to n, we are multiplying by two. Okay. We are increasing i by two. So if we retain these steps in that way, so every time we are multiplying by the two by the previous i. So four, eight, sixteen, and thirty-two, sixty-four. So in that way, you will reach so one to uh, one thousand twenty-four in ten steps. Okay. Two to the power ten. Hmm. So two to the power ten equal to two one thousand twenty-four. That means in ten steps you will reach one to one thousand twenty-four. So this is basically a log n. If you calculate that two to the power ten, so it will come from the okay into one. So for this code, complexity will be total number of steps will be log n, and we can represent the complexity. We go log n. Okay. Sir, mm -hmm. sir, in this question, had it been like i is equal to two into i plus s, so i depends on both i and s. So how will the complexity change? Okay. If you are adding i, so then we have to check the how we are incrementing. So s s plus i, and then i is equal to two i plus s. Mm -hmm. Okay. S plus one second. Okay, moving to the next question. Uh, explain it. Yeah. So every time what we are doing s equal to s plus i, and you are saying that i equal to s plus two into i. Yes. Okay. So what is the s value initially? S equal to zero, and We are adding every time, so we have to check this. Uh, we are getting i equal to one, the first step, and what will be the s value? One. Okay, so this is i, this is s, and in the next step we are adding one also. So this value will be at five. Okay, so not five. S one plus two. Okay, so one plus this is three. Okay, and next time one plus three will be one plus three will four. Okay, in that way. So similarly, if we are increasing in that way, so four plus uh, three into two, uh, six and plus ten, and this will even ten uh, plus four, fourteen. Yeah, similarly, so you can represent the complexity of the same log n for this because. Uh, In that way, we are increasing. In that way, you will reach uh, one thousand twenty-four within the uh, under the log n steps, less than. Okay. So it will be log n for this okay. case also. Yes, log n. You can answer. Okay, but it won't be exactly log n, right? It would be approximately log. Yeah, this is the closest upper bound, actually. Okay, okay. So we can't tell the exact complexity mm -hmm. in this case. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we can take this because this is close to this log n, and it is not. It will never cross this log n. Okay, so you can take this. Okay, so this is the fifth. What is the recurrence relation and complexity for given code? So write the both things for this.
Yeah, recurrence relation uh, we generally defined for the function where we are calling the same function recursively. So recursive uh, recurrence function basically define how we are calling the same function again with a, a sub sub input. Okay, so that function uh, define these things. How we are calling the same function. Can we use a master theorem here? Uh, for to solve this, I think you can use if you know the master theorem. You can use. I think, uh, but uh, this is very simple. There is no need to. Uh, sir, so what exactly does a recurrence relation tell us about a particular function? Actually, recurrence relation uh, represents the total number of steps uh, for the recursive function. Okay, so if How we in the complexity of the program, uh -huh. I'll, I'll show the answer after this. Okay, so just check the response and then discuss. Okay, t n minus one and we go one. Okay, complexity of one. N plus T L minus Okay, T L minus one. And so most of them recurrence relation is not mentioned. N square, N square, no. Mm. Ah, this is incorrect. Complexity N square, no. Okay, so mixed answer I have received. Let's discuss this. Yeah, so here one code is given. Okay, and so same function we are calling again inside the this function. So that is called the recursive and to identify the time for this type of function, we can represent uh, the recurrence relation, which we generally use the Tn. So Tn is the total time. Okay, we are starting the Tn is the time where input is n. Okay, but when we are entering inside this uh, function, so this is the constant step. Okay, if we uh, find out the complexity for this, this is a order of one, and there is one more step return and multiply okay so this multiply is also a constant operation okay after that we are calling the same function with input n minus one so here we can write these things t n minus one that means t n is the total time equal to t n minus one and that means we are calling the same function t where we will calculate the same function t with input n minus one so this is the recursive call part, okay? Recursive call part, and plus apart from the this recursive call, how much time our code is taking? So that is constant. We can represent order of one. Okay. So here you are not multiplying in. No, no. This is a step. And so this is a operation n into. And into yeah. Okay, so for example, if this function is returning a five value, so we are simply multiplying two values. This is a constant operation. So multiplying and this, this is a multiplication. This is a multiplication, not a steps. So multiplication you can perform in the one operation, no? Mm -hmm. If you are passing n equal to, uh, for example, five. Yeah. Okay. So in the first step, you will get five into, mm -hmm. and you will call fact factorial on four Factorial on four yeah okay but after after reaching at the base case it will return the value and when you are get uh, receiving the value you will simply multiply two value like from uh, from the previous so one so one multiply by one okay so this operation is a constant operation multiplication operation mm. okay so okay. apart from the this recursive call our remaining function is uh, taking constant time 
So, so yes. since sorry, uh, since it is multiplying in the recursive call, uh, I mean, uh, it is still a constant function because uh, each time the function call will be factorial of n minus one. I mean, mm -hmm. but how many so, times okay. this function will call uh, themselves? Uh, it will call if n is five, then it will call five times, sir. Five times. If uh, so, we can say that. Uh, this function will call n times uh -huh. okay so and each steps it is taking constant operation one mm -hmm. okay. so that means uh, this is the total time and we are returning in the same way recursive uh, call this is the recursive call t n minus one and apart from that uh, uh, we are uh, our function is taking constant time that means this operation is not dependent on our n value this is a constant Okay. The first if loop. Hmm. Huh. This is not dependent on the n value. That means yeah. if n equal to five, this will run one time. If n equal no. to hundred, this will run one time in one step. Yes. Okay. True. Okay. True. So you can put here. So now this is a new problem. T n minus one. Here you can write T n minus one. What you can write T n minus two plus big O one. Correct. So that means we can write here t n minus two plus big O one plus big O one. Ah, true. Okay. So in that way, next step is t n minus three uh, plus big O one plus big O one plus big O one. Same. Way. Okay. So one step we can see that, and at that, uh, so you will reach. In n steps, so there are total n step required to reach t zero. Okay, so this is the base case n equal to zero. Every time we are decreasing by one. Hmm. Okay, so at the last time you will reach at the t zero, and this t zero is returning directly one, uh, return one here. So we are not calling recursively again, and we will stop. So that means at the time, in the last step, so last step will be one plus. Total number of n steps. Okay, total n steps. Mm. So total complexity will be if we will add one steps n times, we will receive order of n. Okay. Yes. So uh, recursive function for this is t n equal to t n minus one plus we uh, go n. Sometimes we can directly return one here. Okay, so at the place of one, right? plus one. Yeah, one plus one we can also write. Okay, so both are correct. So next is this. I have uh, studied this somewhere. The mm -hmm. number of time recursive function works is the time complexity of that uh, program or that function. Is this correct? Can you repeat? Sorry. Uh, the number of time the loop recursive function is called, mm -hmm. uh, or you can say number of time the recursive function works mm -hmm. is the time complexity of that question. Yeah. So we, uh, which I'm saying that no, we we recurrence relation we generally represent for the function where we are using the recursive call. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. So sure. that is actually calculate the total number of recursive call and what is the ta uh, other time required for each call. Okay. Okay. So based on that, we can calculate the complexity. So there are uh, many methods. So you can use this substitution method, and you can also use a recursion tree to solve this uh, recurrence relation. Okay. Sir. In B eight, we will. Uh, Learn this recursion tree methods. Okay, this is the same similar type of question, but this time we are calling function two times in each call, and every time we are passing input by reducing one value of n. Sir, in this case also it won't change now because we are just adding. 
but but check that uh, how many times this uh, function will call so what is the number of calls for this function for in the in the uh, so the equation will change but i think the complexity two, will remain same two n times no complexity will not remain same here number uh, yeah so at each steps uh, we are taking constant time but number of calls is high oh sir hmm? in this case like uh, in the last line return abc in minus 1 plus abc in minus 1 so will it like happen like this that first abc in minus 1 uh, will uh, uh, occur recursion uh, will um, take part in recursion but the next one will uh, remain constant like will it and uh, will this like addition will, will happen both. in one step or like um, no 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 not in one step um, okay I'll just first the starting abc n minus 1 will run then the second then abc the next one will run, no? yeah, yeah. so basically it's n plus n 2n but then whatever hmm. Complexity is two to the power n and two t n minus one plus one. Two t n okay. n square. No, no, n square is not correct. Two t minus one to the n minus one. T minus one plus t n minus one. Okay, we can combine this. Sir, what will be the value of t to t of zero? So this this is the base case. Mm -hmm. So one. Yeah, return one. Okay. T of zero. Okay. Mm. Okay. Let's discuss the solution. Okay. So this is the similar uh, recursive function we are using, and what will be the recurrence relation for this? So Tn is the total uh, time for the n input. And for each time, we are calling the same function two times. Okay, so This is the first, this is the second. And so we can write Tn minus 1 plus Tn minus 1. And apart from this, uh, what are the other steps? So these are if condition and there is one plus. OK, so both will take constant time simple uh, if condition and return one and plus op uh, operator okay so that means we go one we can consider this one steps so we can simply write 2 t n minus 1 plus 2 1 so this is the recurrence relation okay and to solve this so just check that uh, in first state first state we have t n and we are calling two times t n minus 1 and t n minus 1 okay in the first step and what is the time step required total 1 we go 1 okay so uh, we go 1 for yeah in the first okay calling to time number 1 and same things when we call this t n minus 1 fun function it will also call recursively two times t n minus 2 and t n minus 2 similarly this t n minus 2 and n minus 2 so we are decrementing the n value one in each level okay so if we consider this level wise okay so we, at each level we are uh, decrementing our n value by one so that means total how many levels are required to reach the t zero Step. N step. N step. N. Okay, same. N step. Hmm. So this is the zero. We can write here two to the power zero equal to one step. Okay. This is the first level two to the power one equal to two. That means two 
call okay in the next level you can see that 2 to the power 2 total four steps okay 1 2 3 4 next step total 2 to the power 3 required okay eight steps okay so that means if we will reach the nth level okay so total number of calls required is this is a recursion to right yeah this is the recursion to to represent okay. Okay, so in that way you can easily. How, uh, how, how, it, how it is two steps? Is it two levels? You know? in, uh, in each level, we are counting two steps tn minus one and tn minus one. We are counting two. No, 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 no. So, first thing when we are calling one, uh, this is the main call. Yeah. Okay. Okay. At yeah. that time, we are calling two times tn minus one, tn minus one. This is the okay. So, we are counting two steps. Right. Yeah. But this is a uh, this is a recursive call. It will call okay. two times again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, T n minus two, T n minus two. Similarly, this is a another recursive call. It will also call two times. So that means in the next level there are total four calls. Okay. And how to solve in the equation? How to solve this uh, by the equation? So. Uh, Mathematically, you can also solve. Uh, so you can uh, simply put the value every time, and you can uh, conclude this. So you can simply put this here. So here, this is the first call. Okay, when we put this again, so two into what will be the next value? Two t two n minus two plus big O. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. this is the multiplication. Okay. So one plus big O one. Okay, in that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. No, no, got it, got it. Yeah, so the total number of steps the first and second time we are multiplying by two now. So this is the total number of step two here. Okay. Yeah, got mm -hmm. it. Okay. Similarly, we will once again. So two now the value is four into uh we will put the value here. Okay. So two t two into two t and minus three. And now we will put the same similarly uh, plus two. So two into two hmm. in that way. Okay. So we are getting this. Uh, we are multiplying every time two times. Okay. So here this is the two to the power uh, two. Initially this is the two to the power one, and this is now got it. Got it. Okay. Got it. Got it. In that way got we it. can also calculate. Yeah, yeah, just putting the values right here. Mm -hmm. Got it. So total complexity in, in the last level, you can see that total number of to, two to the power n required. Okay. So this will become a complexity for this. So sir, the complexity will be two to the power n only. N. Yeah, two to the power n. Okay. Okay, so now next is yeah, so this is the based on the sorting. Uh, sorting algorithm selection sort you have already learned in the least two so uh, here selection sort implementation is given okay you know that uh, selection sort is a is not a stable algorithm okay so just verify this uh, for which input this is uh, for which of the following input list the return output list would not be stable yeah so selection sort may be return a stable output or may not be return a stable output okay so just identify the input where this is uh, return this is not return. Sir, can you give an idea of stable output and actually i was yeah so stable for yes. <laughs> stable means if we have an input where the some value are repeating okay Sorry, so, yeah, okay, I'm repeating one second. If we have an input, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3. Okay. So here some value are repeating. 3 is also repeating and 2 is also repeating. So if our sorting, so if we consider, if we naming this repeated value, so for example, if for uh, this 3A, if we mention this A, and this is the B value, okay. And same for the um, two, this is the first two, 
and this is the second row. This is the this is for input where we are mentioning the order of for the similar type of value. So if we sort, if we sort this input by any sorting algorithm, and our sorting algorithm will always re, uh, maintain this order after sorting. Okay, so, so after, sort, after sorting, you will get two, two, three, three. Okay, so this order of these similar two values should remain the same as the input. So this should be A and this should be B. Same so are you writing input. something? Uh, yes, I'm writing, but I think it's delayed. <laughs> it's not visible. It's lagging. Hmm. It's lagging. Yeah, now, yeah, it is yeah. coming. now it is now, Yeah, now it is coming. Okay, so here just check that uh, after sorting, this will be the output. Okay, yes. one, two, two, three, three. But the order should remain same as the input for the similar value. Mm -hmm. If our sorting algorithm is maintaining this uh, property, so we can say that our sorting algorithm is a stable sort algorithm. Okay. Okay. If okay. Or this this order is changed, so we can say that this is not a stable sort algorithm. Okay. So in selection sort, this order may be a change. So because of that, we can uh, we can say that uh, our uh, selection sort is not a stable algorithm. So to that, it's a stable algorithm, right? Uh, stable sort. Uh, can you mute Isrika? Yeah. So I was saying the selection sort is already stable algorithm, right? No, no. Selection sort is not a stable algorithm. Selection sort is not a stable algorithm that may return the unstable output. Oh. Okay. So to uh, verify this, there are four input is given. Just uh, apply the selection sort concept in this input and identify that for which input uh, this selection sort is not returning a stable output. Which input is validating that uh, selection sort is not stable? So if you know the concept of selection sort, so no need to go through the code one by one. Okay, so directly apply the concept on the input. So in selection sort, every time we simply uh, find out the minimum element and replace with the uh, our ith position. Okay, we repeat this step and we always increment i by one and then we perform the same things. We find out the position of minimum element then trap. So, so quickly uh, perform this on the input value and identify that uh, where we are for which input this is not returning a stable output. So uh, for the graph uh, algorithm, so to un understand easily these algorithms, I've, uh, I've added the uh, algorithms steps in easy language in the GitHub notes. So you can use that for learning. Okay, so for graph algorithm, so no need to remember the code of algorithms. Just try to learn these steps for the algorithm. So for example, in BFS, okay, I've just added these steps. Basically what steps we follow in the BFS. Using these steps, you can implement your own code. 
please just try to remember these steps when you are working with BFS. So I've added these algorithms steps uh, for the each algorithms of the graph. What is this? What's a BFS? Yeah, BFS. So that, that's what I was saying, sir. So why, why we are creating this node and, no, sorry, why we are creating first class, then creating object, then other, then this, then that. So Why actually, you... uh, actually, uh, programming language provides lots of things to use uh, for our purpose. Okay, so this depends on us, what things we are using, we can use to uh, make easy our implementation. Okay, sir. Okay. So Q, if you, you can also uh, implement the stack simple using the list. You can perform the operation of a stack uh, by the Python list easily. Okay, so if you are able to implement, you no need to uh, create a class, separate class for this. Thank so you will so that much. affect the efficiency part? Uh, sorry? Sir, uh, will the implementation affect the efficiency part? Yeah, it can we, if, it can affect uh, so, so if you are using the link list and if you are using the list so maybe for q implementation it can affect yeah we will discuss the some question based on that okay in our okay okay question when we come in the big three okay so 30 answer I have received uh option is c yeah now this time is this and the most of the answer is correct Okay. Now C is increasing. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, so for this. So C uh, is answer, I think it is clear to all. No, sir. No? Okay. Yes. No. I'm just taking the option. And we'll use this. Okay, so for each option, uh, we can simply identify for, for example, uh, first A. Okay, so here input is three, one, four, two, four. And when we start from the first value, we find out the what is the minimum value. So what this is the minimum value. Okay, so that means in first step, this three will swap. So what is the uh, repeating value? This is the four. Okay, so just uh, monitor this value where this is changing in our output or not this form there's no need to check other uh, so perform the uh, selection sort sorting on this so the one three four two four in the second step what is the minimum value in the next uh this two okay. okay so one two four three four okay so we are not changing the order of this okay no issue now in the next step what is the minimum value of next three. three okay so one two we will swap this by this so three four four and in the next step so there is no minimum we will not swap mm -hmm. okay so we'll remain same and after that we are our we, uh, we have completed our all steps so that means in any steps we are not changing the order of these two fours okay that means for this input, our uh, algorithm is returning a stable output. No problem. For the second input, four, four, three, one, two. Now just check that uh, this is the first four, okay? And A, and this is the B. And uh, when we are just finding out the first minimum, this is this one is the one, okay? So we are swapping this. So one, four, three, four, two. Now our order is changed. This is B, this is A. Okay, this yes. is uh, with this. Okay, now perform the second. What is the minimum of uh, this two? Now one, two, three, four, four. Now this is A and this uh, is swept with here. Okay, so this is B. Now next one is the minimum. Uh, next again is the minimum. This is minimum. So there is no, you can see that in the output list, our order is not changing. A and B. Okay, so this is also correct. And for the next input, uh, four, four, three, two, one. Same things we will perform the first swapping. So our order will become changed. So this is A, this is B. And after first steps, 
so we will get one four three two four. okay so this is b and this is a next step this step will perform by two so one two three four four now this is b and this is a now same three four four there is no change after that. so you can see that here order is change yes okay. this is the in, uh, this is the input same for we can perform with the last four one four two three so this first we will swap this so one four four two three so this is our a and this is b okay in the next step we will swap with this okay so one two four four cursor is not, cursor is not visible sir oh yeah now yeah, yeah okay now it is yeah, something now is happening. Is. Okay. So now this is the B and this is A. But yeah. in the next, next step, we will perform swapping with this three. Okay. So yeah. one, two, uh, three, four, four. Yeah. Now this is A and this is B. Yeah. So same thing, order is not changed. So for third option, our order is changed. So that is the correct answer. Yeah. Okay. So which option is correct? There are two function are given GN and FN. Okay. And based on that, identify that which option is correct. D. It should be D. D. Okay, we'll discuss this. Yes, yes. Discuss this. Mm -hmm. Let's try to give your uh, best answer according to you. Okay, so I'm opening this uh, because we have lots of questions remaining. So, oh, the equal response B, C, D. There's no A. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so for this. Uh, answer to the B. B. Yes. Okay, so you mentioned that B. Okay, so here GN is given. Okay, and FN is given. So what is the highest order of GN? Four. 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 And to the power four? Yes. Okay, yes. and what is the highest order of uh, FN? And to the power three. three. And to the power and three? Okay. Log N. Okay, and to the power three. Okay. So for this, this type of function, you can simply use this uh, information. 
so that is for gn we can use this highest order uh, n4 and we can so that means we can convert this whole uh, expression into this highest highest order of n4 okay uh, so after converting this just check that so for if we are saying that if fn is big o gn so big o when we are writing this line so that means this gn should be greater than this fn because this uh, order big o is represent the upper bound so that gn value should be greater or equal to this fn it cannot be less than okay so is this true for a option pardon pardon sir what do you tell if we are writing this fn is equal to big o gn okay so that means we are saying that for the rotation of the big o so this is the c gn and this fn so according to the big o definition this c gn is uh, always be greater than or equal to this fn got it got it okay for so particular just, value of this uh, right. yeah so just check that this gn this gn is greater than or equal to our fn or not if you are writing this Okay, greater, so, greater, I think. Yeah, greater, na? Greater. Yeah, so, Gn is our n to the power 4 and uh, Fn is n q log n. Okay. So, here, if we are saying Fn is equal to Gn, so this is correct, but this is not correct. Gn, we cannot write this Gn is big O Fn because this value is less than. Okay. So, in upper bound, this Fn cannot become inside this big O. Because inside which value we are taking this uh, inside this big O bracket, that should be greater than or equal to this G uh, on the right side value. Okay, so this condition is not true. Fn is uh, big O Gn. Okay, this is correct. But Gn is not big o fn yeah this is correct same for fn is not hello sir hmm? so simple way to check this if uh, you are saying g of n is greater than f of n so any way to check this so we can directly uh, so for example if we have a, a one f expression fn equal to 2n plus 3 okay so i can simply convert this expression in the highest order of n I simply can take if I if I take uh, if I convert this three to n, okay. So I can simply write two n plus n will always be greater than equal to two n plus three if we take n equal to greater greater than equal to three. Okay, I can write this two n plus n is always be greater than equal to. 2n plus 3 for each value of n which is greater than 3. Yeah. This condition right. become true. So I can simply hmm. write this as a 3n. So same way we can also convert this lower part into a uh, is this highest order part. Okay, for any some for any constant uh, terms. Similar way we can also convert this lower part into a this highest order. Okay, so just note the highest order of the function to check these things if the constant is there just just put uh, n for that equation yeah so we are we will just take this uh, we will take this n to the power 4 part we will uh, we will not consider this constant part So it will be always mutually mutually exclusive, right? Like if if n uh, is uh, over big O of gn, then the uh, uh, other other will not be true, right? Uh, other. Like the then like as in option hmm. b, it is like if n uh, if n is over big of or big Haan, o of gn. This condition, no, no, other is also possible if it's the same uh, operator is also given here n four. Uh, we can write uh, c times zero equal to f n, right? Hmm? Sorry. Hello. Huh? Hello. 
So, sir, uh, you are saying f of n is big of g of n. So, we can write c times g of n greater than equal to f of n. So, we have to find such constants c and n for yes, which yes. g of n is greater, right? Hmm. So, so, constant things we can easily find out. Uh, after take, uh, putting this condition, so similar in the in the similar way, we can uh, easily convert the lower part into a higher higher part for some constant. If I simply put here for any n value, so if I put simply uh, n q log n here, okay, and where. I'll just take the condition for any for any value of n which are satisfying this condition n is greater than equal to this uh, 4 3 6 n square. So we can find any value of n that will satisfy this condition. Yes, yeah, so n cube is a um, higher degree. Uh, so it will always be greater than n square for any n. Hmm. So you can, so you, what can value? you can how find to, the value the of n where this condition is satisfied, and you can replace by this. Uh... Okay, so for example, uh, for this situation, so this is n square, okay, and this is n q. Um, so one second, uh, this is the highest order of term, okay, and I want to convert this. Uh, if I have written this. Here n three log n. Okay, and hmm. so for which uh, uh, so what is the value of n where this condition is true? We can replace this term by this term, and we will increment by this five seven six three. Okay, so in that case we can, we are converting the our lower order of n terms into a highest order of n term. Okay, so there is no need to. Uh, check the lowest lo, lower terms of the function when we are uh, comparing the complex complexity or when we are comparing the function writing something yeah i'm not writing okay okay so this type of question simply just put check the highest order of n and compare these and suppose if both are of same yeah both same are if, uh, yeah so if both are same highest order of n square so you can uh, you can use in the both way fn is because gn you can also prove this you can also prove this the, this part then option a would have been correct okay. sir can we uh, use that lopetal's rule also like to find which uh, one is the upper bound Okay, so right now, loop the rule. Uh, this, this is not so, uh, in one session, like Bhaskar sir was telling, like we can put the function says numerator and denominator and take the limit. Okay, so the, right now I am not aware of this function. Okay, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think we can use that also. Yeah, you can use if uh, you know about that. Okay, so uh, right okay. now we can easily find which con which is satisfying the condition. Okay, so if we are if we are saying that f n is big O g n, that means this uh, initial part should be greater than or equal to this f n. Then we then yeah, we can write yeah. this. Yeah, then we can write this. Okay, if we are writing this, so that means this f n should be greater than or equal to this g n. Then it will become true. Yeah. Okay, so but in our case, only this B option is correct, and the other option, so F n is not big O G n. So this is not true. First condition is not true because we can prove this condition. Okay, and the same way, uh, G n is uh, so this is not true. For the first step. So remaining option are not true. Only the B option are possible to prove. Yes. Yeah, next one is yeah. So merge sort. So I quickly give the answer. You have already learned this property. What is the recurrence relation of merge sort in best and worst case?
okay so 19 have received so others are not responding out of 64 so some these are some basic uh, property of, of sorting algorithm you should uh, remember these things to uh, give the quick answer this um, recommendation for each uh, sorting algorithm we will have to remember right i mean no 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 so uh, we are using the recursive approach for uh, merge sort and quick sort okay so recurrence relation we are using for merge sort and quick sort Okay, but uh, for best case, worst case, if some scenario is different, so we can uh, define the different different recursive recurrence relation. So for merge sort, okay, if you still A is eleven, B is eight, then D is two. Okay, not correct. You are not correct. Actually, uh, merge sort, the complexity will remain same in the all cases because uh, it is not, we always divide our problem into two equal sub problem every time. Okay, it is not depending on our input order. The answer is B, right? Answer is uh, C. Okay. <laughs> I. Uh, B. Yeah, so B is yeah. not correct uh, because when we are calling two times, okay, so there are two functions generally we used. Uh, okay, I'm explaining here. So merge sort, there are two functions we used in the merge sort. So there is one merge sort and there is one merge. Okay. And we call recursively this merge sort two times, uh, this stuff for n input. So we call ms of n by 2 and ms of n by 2 okay and repeatedly we call this until we will get the one element in the last step okay when ms have one element and after that we start the merge pro merge steps and this merge step takes n time if you remember if we are uh, merging two sorted lists so if our input list size is n for both, okay. So over this step takes maximum two n steps to merge. Okay, so we can see that the complexity of this merge is order of n. And total number of uh, labels are there when we are dividing the problem. Okay, so this is the first label, and we are dividing this uh, uh, problem two times. So this is the second label, and every time we are dividing the input by two so that means initially this uh, our input size is n and next level our input size is n by two next level our input size is n by four so in that way so if we are moving our n to one in in that way so we will reach one in log n step okay and each steps our time is total time is uh, so for the first step for merging these two, okay, so for merging these two list, we need order of n time. Similarly, so this n by plus. How order of n? So we are merging, so this is the list with n by two size, okay, this is the list with n by two size and we are merging. Yeah. Total time will be n. Okay, total time is n. Here we have size uh, m s n by four, m s n by four, m s n by four, and m s n by four. Okay, so for merging here, so these two list will return to a uh, sorted list, and merging these two, n by four plus n by four, n by two, and n by four plus n by four, n by two. Total. N. Okay. So each label total time is required order of N. Mm -hmm. Okay. And total number of labels are log N. Okay. So we can simply multiply N into log N. Total complexity is N log N. And this is the, yeah, this is the case, case for each type of uh, uh, 
condition so best case and worst case so mersot will perform all the operation equally uh, independent of input order okay next is the sir one doubt sir can you open your notepad mm -hmm. yeah. yes sir uh, let's say we have a one list of uh, sorted order one two three four mm -hmm. and another list of sorted order five six seven eight mm -hmm. when we merge them mm -hmm. take uh, n iteration so that's why its complexity is n right uh, n iteration so if we are considering that this is a n okay same size we are considering that this is a n oh, we can't okay. your screen sir See my screen is not visible. You you are opening your notepad and writing. Yeah, right. Yeah, I am writing. No, sir, we can't. Not not visible. Not visible. Okay, one second. Maybe it will reflect it. Sometime. Yeah, now now we can. Yeah. So these are two sorted lists, and mm -hmm. when we are trying to merging these two sorted lists, so we have to compare the element one by one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we will compare this element by this first element. Which one is the smaller one? Okay, and then we will shift uh, this pointer to the next uh, place. So two and five will compare. Now two will yeah. come here. Yes, sir. Th that I know. The yeah. point is, it will take n number of iterations, or time complexity will be n, right? Yes. Why can't we, sir? We just con can uh, that is concatenate or what? Add them, and then just use the sort function. Sort function take. Uh... Uh, my my point is l one plus l two. And then sort it. Hmm, but uh, sort function takes n log n time, na? Right? So it it is uh, okay. Okay. Sir. Okay. If you are apply, yes. so after merging this, so for example, you are saying that uh, after merging, you are applying. Yeah. After merging, I am applying. Okay. So sort function will take n log n time. It, it's greater than n. Okay. Thank you so much. Sir. Okay. So for if both list are sorted, we can perform this operation in order of n time. By comparing the elements. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next one is. Uh, this is uh, related to the quick sort. What is the, what of the sorry, which of the following statement is correct? About the quick sort, what the value that the first element is in the list selected as a pivot element. So it it is a multiple correct question, right? Yeah. I'm asking. But answer. In answer sheet, I can give only one answer. Oh, MCQ is in a will Yes. Uh, yes. You are... One second. So, option are coming for this question? Yes, answer, option is coming, but only one option can select. Yes. Oh, okay. I think wrongly configured. Options. Yeah, this is wrongly configured actually. So, just uh, tell me the answer in chat box. More than one answer. Yes, can you mute yourself? Lots of noise are coming. Thanks. Okay. Okay, so let me check my the answer. A D A D A D. A D A D. Yeah. It is the correct answer for this, correct. So the best case is when the pivot element always divide the list into two equal. Up. Okay, so this is the best condition. If we are selecting the pivot element as a first element and after partition process, it is coming in between. Okay, so that means our uh, list is dividing every, every time into the half part. So in that way, we will reach uh, the in the last step in log n times and our complexity will become uh, n log n. 
So first is correct. The best case is only when the input list is arranged in ascending order. Okay, so this is not true because uh, if our list is also arranged in the descending order, that will also be uh, worst case. Uh, okay, so this is best case. Uh, no, 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 this is a worst case actually. Yeah, yeah, Manu. Oh, sir, whenever we are selecting pivot as first element and uh, if the list is unsorted and uh, then we have to. Uh, Means the pivot is uh, won't it be worst case, sir? Pivot is uh... worst. Worst case is uh, that if our pivot element is always coming on the corner side. Okay, so in that case, we have to call the quick sort with n minus one element again. Okay, I'll explain with the uh, graphically. Okay, so first we will discuss the option. So second option, the best case is only when the input list is arranged in ascending order. So this is not a best case. This is a worst case. Okay, if our list is already sorted or already sorted in descending order, so both are the worst case for quick sort. Uh, the worst case is when the pivot element always divide the list into two equal R. So this is not a worst case. This is a best case, and the D option, the worst case is when the input list is either arranged in ascending order or descending. So this is correct. The last option, the worst case is only when the input list is in descending order. So this is, uh, okay, so ascending order is also a worst case. So this option is not correct. So option A and D are the correct. So sometimes the recurrence relation is also asked. I think the next question is also related to this. I'm just moving to this. Uh, what is the recurrence relation of quick sort in best and worst case? Okay, so I am giving the answer for both. Okay, so for example, if our list is sorted order, one, two, three, four, five, six, in that way. Okay, and we are, our our aim is also to sort it in an increasing order. So and we are selecting the pivot element for as a first element. Uh, so what will we do? What what will happen? So we will perform the partition process. It will take n time, okay. And after that, our the, we are not changing the position of our pivot element, and it is coming on the one corner side, okay. So initially, total elements are n. In the next step, our quick sort will call on the right part, okay, because there is no left part. Uh, after selecting the this first element as a pivot element, this is coming on the first position. So that means only right side is uh, remaining. So we will call the quick sort on this right part. So now the what is the size of our input? N minus one. Okay. Same things in the next step we are selecting this uh, this two as a pivot element. And after performing the partition process, it will come at the same position because this is the smallest element in this part. So same once again uh, this uh, this. Two will come on the one corner side, and remaining element will remain the n minus two. So, in the next step, q as n minus two. So, in the first step, our partition process taking n time. In the second process, our partition process taking n minus time, and the next step it will take n minus two time. Okay. So, same way we are decreasing one element each in the each call. So now the what is what will be the recurrence relation for this? T n equal to T n minus one, and apart from that, our partition process is taking order of n time. Okay. So for worst case, for the quick sort, our recurrence relation will uh, look like this. Okay. So every time we are calling on the right part, if our list is already sorted in ascending order. Similarly, if our input is yeah, Manan. Yes. Yes, Manan. Sir, am I audible? Hmm, you are audible now. Uh, sir, I wanted to know uh, after completing this question, can you tell how can we calculate recurrence relationship for any given algorithm? Overview would be fine. Uh, have you joined the last uh, se open session on badness day? Uh, no, sir. I was unable to join that session. 
so can you watch the, that session i think the complexity this part is uh, discussed in detail okay sir i'll do that thank you sir. and in week two also i uh, basker have conducted two session for this complexity so just uh, was the wednesday session okay sir okay. thank you yeah so in the for the quick sort uh, so this is the recurrence relation for this situation okay so and this is a worst worst case so and if we solve this part so in each steps our uh, partition process is taking the n time then n minus 1 then n minus 2 till 1 and now if we will add all these steps we will get n into n plus 1 divided by 2 so total complexity is n square okay similar for if our input is descend in in the descending order 6 5 4 3 2 1 and if we are selecting this is a pivot element after partition process this will come on this part 6 and our all element will come before this okay so if our list is already in descending order okay so in that case our uh, pivot element will always come on the right side and every time we will call the quick sort on the left part with n minus 1 element so similarly it will also take order of n square and the best best condition is that if our pivot element is always coming in between if we are selecting uh, first element as a pivot element and it is always coming in between after the partition process so in that case initially we have n element and we are selecting the pivot element so uh, and our pivot element is coming in between so that means we will call quick sort with n minus 2 on the left part and quick sort on the n minus n divided by 2 element on the right part of the pivot so in each time we will divide in that way so this is uh, similar to our merge sort okay so total steps are required and and at each level and total levels are log n okay so total uh, total steps are n into log n Hello. yeah Hello. Sorry, so you are writing something it's still not visible yeah yeah so this is actually uh, steps when we when our pivot is coming in uh, in between okay so if our pivot is coming in between that means we will call our quick sort algorithm on left half part on and on a right half part okay so that means every time we are dividing our uh, list into two half part and we are calling the quick sort on the two uh, both half part so the uh, if this condition is happening so the, in that way uh, we are we will reach we will perform the um, total number of log n, log n label are required and each label total number of steps are n for the partition so similar way we, we can calculate the complexity and log n so n into log n steps in the worst case it's n minus 1 plus order of n Recurrence. No, 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 no. Worst case is uh, recurrence. This is the this is the uh, recurrence for worst case. And what is the recurrence for best case? So that is T n equal to. And every time we are dividing list into two equal half. Okay, so two t n by two n by two and part our partition yes. process is taking order of n time. Okay. okay. So this is the two recursive call of our quick sort. And apart from that, our partition process is taking order of n steps and so this is the recurrence relation so in both best and worst case partition is taking order n steps no no for worst case complexity oh. is order of n square yeah so uh -huh. in, recur in recurrence relation yeah. order of this, this is the complexity of partition process yeah okay. but here the number of calls are n here number of calls are n uh, and every time our steps are decreasing n, n minus 1, and n minus 2 in that way. And we are reaching uh, in the uh, n steps. Okay. Okay. So, because of that, uh, total, uh, if, we, if we add all these steps, we are getting this uh, n, into, n into n plus 1 divided by 2. Similar to our uh, selections or insertions. Okay. Those cases, order n squared. 
best is n log n. Yeah, best is n log n, and worst is order of n square. And also, just think about that. What is the case when we are getting order of n square, and what when we are getting n log n for quick sort? Mm. Yes. Okay. So now this is the next uh, related to the B three. So in this question, we are implementing a queue using a linked list. Okay, and uh, each node of the linked list is created by the given class node. Here, one class is also created for the node, and we can create an object for this class using the using the class name. Uh, each node of the linked list is an object of class uh, node. The queue has a head pointer, so okay. The yeah, queue has a head pointer and also a tail pointer. That point to the last element. Tail point, tail pointer point to the last node, and head pointer point to the first node. So, what will be the complexity? Which one of the following is the time complexity of the most time efficient implementation of in queue and d queue, respectively, for the data structure? so here our queue is implemented using a linked list and we are asking a time complexity of n queue and d queue so n queue means we are inserting a new element okay and d queue means we are removing a element from the queue and this information is also given we are we are adding the element and we are from we are deleting the element so in queue we implemented by inserting a new node at the tail so that means we are inserting a new element at the last and removing the element from the first head uh, excuse me sir hmm? so if it's not uh, too much trouble can you explain the gist of what stack and how stacks and queues work like just a small explanation of it okay so stack uh, so stack property is that uh, if we will explain stack just remember this uh, operation last in first out last in first out so that means uh, this is a stack is a linear data structure where, where we can insert a element and we can remove the element but both operations should be performed from one side so this is the condition if our data structure is following this condition for insert and remove then we can see that this data structure is a stack okay so for example if you have a list okay so 1 2 3 4 okay so and every time you are when you are adding a new element in the list you are adding from adding at the end and same times if you so if you are performing if you are following these two properties with the data structure that means you are performing a stack data structure so it's like it's from the same same end right? tail end uh no no so uh, yeah stack yeah in stack, stack we are yeah. yeah from adding same from same end. Hmm. yeah okay so if generally we represent the stack operation so for example if we have a uh, this uh, base and this is a one rod and just take a take example of cd case uh, so cd we can insert from the top every time okay so we can insert from the uh, top every time when we are inserting a new cd it will always come at the top if we want to remove the cd one cd so the last inserted cd will remove first okay so there is only one side where we can where from we can insert and where from we can delete so this condition if we are following with the data structure for inserting element and for removing the element so that is called the stack and for queue first in first out this is the simple terms for the queue so for queue is simply uh, when we are inserting a new element so for example this element is inserted first and second third fourth okay so we will always insert the element from one side and we will remove the element from the another side so 
so that means those elements are inserted first then it will remove first okay so if we are, if we are adding the so for example for we have added the one in our data structure so that is coming at this position and when we are adding the next value two so it will come before this so the basically for stack it keeps pushing the elements to the corner and for q it just keeps adding on top of that in that in the other direction other other direction uh, but uh, you cannot perform so for example uh, if we are inserting element in that way so first element inserted is this one then two then three then four okay so those element added the first time okay so that will remove first we cannot remove this one last deleted okay so got it thank okay, you sir. so because of that we are saying that first in first out so this is a, uh, this is the general scenario when we uh, create a line for the tickets okay, okay so, so those come first and uh, take the ticket first <laughs> okay so if we follow this uh, rule in our data structure to insert a element and remove the element that means we are performing a queue data structure so here we are implementing a queue using a link list and we are performing this in queue means insert and dq means delete element uh, from so insert we are performing from the tail side and delete we are performing from the head side so what will be the time complexity of both operation in queue and dq so okay so we are inserting at the last you have one okay delete group one yeah is the correct answer yes correct yeah so both operation can be performed in the constant time by replacing the pointers value of the head and tail uh so the option a is correct for this so what if a, 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 a if they don't mention from where you are adding or from where you are removing so it will become order of end time no no if it is not mentioning uh, then i think the question is not correct if there is no tail pointer then no i said that in between if i want what, to what do i want to insert in between so then that you... can take enter no if we are implementing q we cannot insert in between okay q not oh, sorry yes q okay here we are implementing a q data structure yes in q we can't do this thing huh. so here here we have a tail pointer uh, which no, is no no that will be tail... linked list it is not linked list ah yeah we are using the linked list but we want to uh, implement the queue data structure so we are yes, okay sir. so if we are performing a queue implementation so that means only two operations should be supported by this in queue and dq and when we are performing in queue that means one element should be most time is so inserted so, sorry inserted uh, in the list and when we are performing dq then one element should be deleted from this list and other operation we cannot perform this So for a simple linked list, if uh, we have to insert any element in the middle, then what will be? This is the another case. Uh, if you are, uh, if you are talking about the linked list, uh -huh. okay, it's not Q or stack. not Q or okay. So hmm. it depends on what the pointers are given. So for example, if we have a linked list and there is only one pointer head, okay, in that way, and our linked list is a connected by a single reference for the next node in that way sorry yes. this is the reference okay and last node contain null value so we have only one head pointer that contains the reference of first node so we can insert new <coughs> node at the first position in constant time okay we can mm -hmm. also remove the first element in constant time if we want to add a new element at the last position we have to traverse all the node okay if we want to add a new element at the last position so we have to start from the uh, first node and we have to reach till the last node then we can insert okay so that will take order of n time if we want to remove the last node same things we have to start from the first node we have to reach till the last node then uh -huh. we can remove so some of the question in our course they are given last pointer also but in linked list generally in linked list don't have last pointer right so this is not a predefined thing so this is not a fixed things this is depend on us how we are implementing this 
Yes, sir. There, uh, this is what my question is. Like, if we don't have a tail pointer, then it will take order of n time to remove the last element, right? Yes. yes. Okay. If we have so for this structure, if for example, if this structure is given, yes. yes. Okay, and each node containing reference of the next node. So if you want to remove the last node, because you have only the reference of first node, so you have to identify the last node by traversing from the first node. Okay, you can you can not directly access the last node uh, reference, so because you have only head, and that contains the reference of first node, and in that way you have to start the traversing from the first node, then second, then third, then fourth, and till the last, and then you can remove. So that means you are traversing each node. If total n nodes, you are traversing n nodes. So total complexity will become n. So if you have to insert a limit in the middle of an enclosure, so n O n will be done, right? Yeah. So if you are inserting in middle and uh, in removing from middle, both are uh, order of n operation. Okay, I'm right. Hmm. Okay. But if sure. tail is also if tail is also given with the last node, which is pointing to a last node. Okay, here head is pointing to a first node and tail is pointing to a last node. If this structure is given, then what will be the complexity for insert a node? At the first position and last position, or oh, sorry, remove the node from the first position. So both are big O one. Hmm. Okay, but what will be the complexity of insert a new node at the last position and remove the node from the last position if this structure is given? Then also order of n. No. So insert no. insert will Point. take insert will take order of one. One. And okay. delete will take order of n. Uh -huh. Delete will take order of uh, order of n because uh, we have the reference of this node. But if we want to remove this node, we have to set the null value in this field because after removing this node, there is no node after that. Okay, so we have to set null value in the la uh, last node field. But we don't have the reference of this node. And we can uh, also not access the reference from the last node because the link is uh, uh, connecting in the reverse way. Okay, we so have to go to the second uh, node. Yeah, right? yes. Also, of uh -huh. yeah. So to set the null value in the second last node next field, we have to traverse the whole list from the first. Then we have we will reach that node, and then we can set the null value here. Each node we have to shift, right? Not shift. We have to traverse. There is no shifting. Each node is uh, uh, created separately, and we are uh, connecting all the node by uh, storing the reference of each node in the previous node. Yeah, traverse. We have to traverse each node, right? Yeah. So it is order of n. Okay. So because if we want to remove the node from the last, we have to set this null value in the second last node field, and uh, we we cannot access the reference of the second last from the last node. Okay, because uh, Every node contains the reference of next node, not the last node, previous node. Okay, so to identify the second last node, we have to traverse the list from the starting, and then uh, when we are reaching at the second last node, then we can set the null value. But for in queue, it is not required because no need to traverse whole, just mm -hmm. add on. Mm -hmm. So for the given question, so both operation will take order of one time. Because here we are inserting a new node at the last position and tail is given, so that will can be easily performed in the constant operation. Same for the uh, remove. Okay, so the best, the, the best case will be because we are deleting from the first and and uh, and going at the last. Then it is the best case, right? Uh, best case, uh, yeah. Here tail is given. Actually, tail is given, so we are we can easily. Add using this tail information, and uh, we we can remove the element from the head. So what was the question? first first element first element we can remove. If it is at the first position, we can remove. That will be the best case. Order of one, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, best okay. case. So in got link it, list, we it. can perform both of the one first. Case. Okay, okay, got it, got it. Yeah. So this is the simply uh, check the um, in queue and DQ operation for the queue. So just follow these operations. So in queue means we are inserting a ten value. So here in queue ten means we are inserting a ten value into the queue. 
okay so if you know the concept of q just perform this these operation in sequential way and check that what what is the value in the q after that so in between can i ask one question from linked list mm -hmm. uh can you open practice assignment with the practice assignment question number 1 practice assignment uh, b3 yes programming or uh, theory theory hmm sir in third options i uh, understood i need to insert uh, you can see even or odd for this i need to delete even and odd uh, element okay so here one structure is given a head is the first node of the linked list okay head is pointed to the first node and what is the purpose i need uh, to delete uh, मल्टीप्लेक्ट third and fourth uh, you can say third and fourth options mm -hmm. but uh, doing okay so third and fourth option okay so so this is the code and this is the first option second option and third you are asking for third yes third okay so one second mm -hmm. so to solve this uh, question just uh, imagine the list structure in your mind so list structure is head okay and this is the first node second node third node fourth. so you can take some example okay for the any value of n like you have six node okay yes 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 and uh, i am also taking one more to middle edit Let me figure this out. Yeah, if seven nodes are there, so this is a middle. We want to remove this. Yes. Okay. And what we are setting this? Uh, so in, initially we have only head pointer, and we are taking one current C U R R, and we are taking two variable. One is C U R R, which is pointing this first node. Okay. We are assigning head to both. So C U R R and C U R R first. both are pointing to a head fine yes sir okay. and there is one also a c u r r previous and we are just initialized with null okay so this is the initialization of false and we are taking flag equal to false and what we are doing actually inside this while loop while c u r r fast okay so c u r r fast non the value is the non a not non then it will be executed if it is a non can't execute yes fast that it will be ah. so if flag certain. so if for example if this flag equal to if this is not true so initially this is false yes. okay so that means this condition will not uh, satisfy yes then next term i am taking next element reference to the next element but then i uh, yes any flag you goes to for, true mm, okay one second i am coming on that so if this flag equal to false this condition is not true what we are doing we are shifting this curr fast to crr fast dot next so right now what is the value of crr fast curr fast dot next so this next is the field of this which is containing the reference of next node okay yes so when we are writing this c u r r fast dot next that means we are reading the value from here and we are putting to this so what is the value representing the value is representing the reference of second node and yes. we are assigning this to a c u r r fast so that means now our c u r fast is shifting to here and po pointing to this node sir first of all it is assign uh, assigning my first of all assigning the reference mm -hmm. so when i assign the reference 
that is means i am uh, taking uh, next element right that uh, that uh, assigning value yeah this is the initialization after that we are just shifting this uh, cur first and these all these value so what is the purpose of this code basically in each step our curr pointer will shift only one position but this curr first will shift uh, two position so in first first of all in first case plug is false so if our plug is false it won't go uh, inside uh -huh. right uh -huh. so inside is not going but this but is the, this is the outside car. yes first of all car first is a first element then into uh -huh. car first dot next it will be second element uh -huh. as then i'm uh, assigning plug is to true uh -huh. so in the first case when flag equal to fa false then now our curr fast is shifted one position ahead yes okay and when now we are assigning this flag equal to not true that means now our flag become true when we are moving next okay so now this condition is true then is this time we are shifting the cur pre to here okay hmm. okay because our cur are pointing to this node head so we are also assigning this previous to same node and then we are shifting our curr to the next now in the next step uh, cp i am just written in the simple term cp okay cp is pointing to here cp uh, sorry c is pointing to here and in the next step so this will always be ex execute yes okay without... here i am just going but how do i remove it that's the idea no we are removing here we are removing here in the last point Okay, just uh, complete this while loop first. Okay, while loop will be stop when uh, it will be reached to the end. Huh. Right? Uh, Actually, uh, this CP is uh, shifting only one position uh, previous uh, position. Okay, and yes. this CUR fast will uh, shift it two times. In yes, if it is a means... true, if it is a flag is true, then it will be shift. Okay, I'm just pointing out. So uh, during this while loop, so when we are our C is reaching this middle element, and these so total number total number of our steps are four. So in four steps, our C U R R fast will reach at the last. So if you see that one time we are our flag value equal to true, and one time our flag value equal to false. Okay, so that means our CURR fast is shifting two position when CURR uh, is shifting only one position. So this value is shifting one position at the same time our CURR fast is shifting two position. Okay. So why, why are we taking these two uh, variables? Like why are we taking CURR and CURR fast? Why can't this be done using just one variable? So uh, identify the mid. So identify the middle element. So there is two way. Just count count the all element first, and uh, just divide it by two, and then once again traverse the uh, to the middle element. But right. here uh, for identification of the middle element, we are performing in the different way. We are taking this curr first, and in each step. So for one time this flag equal to true, and then the second, next time this flag equal to false. So but, this. Uh... Variable that we're getting so that uh, the one that we are passing through this function head is this a list? No, head, uh -huh. is, a, head is a simple reference of the first node. Okay, okay, what? okay. So, and so I'm just simple as C fast. So, in each time, C fast is shifting two position. When C fast is shifting two position, our C is shifting only one position. Well, even if the Curfast, sorry, if it if the flag is true, then curfast is shifting two positions, right? You mean to say? Yeah, if our flag equal to true, we are also shifting the CURR fast and we are also shifting our CURR. But our flag equal to false, we are not shifting our this CURR. Okay. No, so uh, because of yeah, because of this flag equal to false and true. So that means for uh, for false value yeah so this cf is increasing for false and true both condition 
but this c is incrementing only for true so when our flag value equal to true so that means when our cf is shifting two position our c is shifting only one position so in that case our if our cf is shifting 10 position our c will shift only five position <coughs> okay sir we can we find the content for uh, these type of questions sorry uh, can you repeat so in which week of the course can we find uh, the videos uh, of practice assignment practice assignment uh, uh, big 3 big 3 thank you okay so in that day uh, so our fast cur are fast is uh, shifting um, two times compared to the c so when we are reaching this uh, our cf when we are reaching at the 10th node uh, our c will reaching at the 5th node so using this yes. this loop after completion of this loop our cf will reach at the last position at that time our c will reach at the half part of this and this is the identification of middle and after that what we will do and we are also taking this cur p so we are also shifting the cp in the same way so cp will point to the previous node of the middle and after that what we will do we will simply read the address of this node this is available here with the c dot next so current dot next we will copy into a cp dot next so current previous dot next okay so it, it is taken in the different way so c u r p that means this uh, c u c p dot next dot next is this one and dot next so this is for this one okay and we are assigning this reference of in this field this is the this position so in that way the reference we will lost from the, of the middle element and our node is connected one after that yes i understood very good mm -hmm. So okay. previous is I'm okay. Just uh, first uh, complete to the all question. Actually, many question are there. Yeah, so what is the solution for this? Uh, C. C. Okay. <clears throat> so you just type to calculate this. I think this is this should be correct. Check the answer. Okay, yeah, C is the correct answer for this. So I think this is the easy one for you. Now moving to the next. So see now here is stack operation. If you know the concept of stack, last in first out, perform this uh, operation. Push push means we are inserting a new element, and pop means we are removing the element. and both operation we can perform from one side and just perform this operation one by one and just check that what is the pop returning at each step so the sequence is given when our pop operation is performing so, so what pop is returning so there are total five pop and five value is given in the options Okay, nineteen answer is given. So this was yeah B. Yes. So B is the correct answer for this. Uh, so initially we are uh, uh, pushing. Yeah, we can consider the C D case, right? Which you said. Yes, yes. We are the pushing. Same, same. Hmm. We are shifting ten. Then. on the top we will uh, post 20 then 20 will remove first okay then uh, uh, 10 okay so i have to 
Yeah, so simple. Uh, 10, then 20, then we are removing first this one. So 20 is coming. And now we have 10, and we are pushing 10 again, then we are pushing 20, and then we are performing pop, pop, pop three times. Okay, so this 20 will come, then 10 will remove, then 10 will remove. Okay, now empty. Now we are inserting push again in empty stack 10, sorry, 20. Then we are performing pop. So 20. So 20, 20, 10, 10, 20. This is just this answer. B. Yeah. This is uh, based on the linear probing hashing. Yeah, so yeah, some uh, one hash table is given here, and the value is also uh, inserted at the index. Just check that uh, for which order this uh, assignment is possible. So we have to check the order in which we can insert the keys in the hash table hmm. using the linear probing approach. Yeah. And check that uh, for which. Uh, order this is possible so i'm not sure this is a again sir this is an msq so okay, should we this just is MSQ, yeah. okay just write in the chat box if multiple answers there. I have received only two answers in the chat. Okay, I'm explaining the answer for this. Uh, yeah. So we have four sequence given here. So we have to check the answer from the option for this question. Okay. And uh, we have hash function key mod 5. This one. Okay. So 51 mod 5, what would be the value? 1. 1. one. Okay, so that means this is correct coming at the correct position and 18 3. three. Okay, this is also correct. 45 0. 0. This is also correct. 60. It should be zeros, but it will linear yeah, probe. So two. linear probing. So 60 is uh, both position are shifting uh, full uh, field. So we will uh, perform the linear probing. Then 60 is coming at the correct position. Now 34. Yeah, this Four. is correct. So first option is correct. The same will be. Yes. 
so here we are checking the order in which the keys are inserted in the table and uh, um if are, yeah if collision are occurs we are then we will use the linear probing approach okay but the keys uh, which are given in the table in which order it's coming that order we have to check from the options hmm, from the option so that means if this order is uh, in this then uh, uh, this assignment is possible yes. from which order okay if we will check for the mm -hmm. second option 18 we are getting 3 so uh, that means this is correct this is coming from the correct position 60 uh, that should be come because now only the one assignment zero. is there so 60 60 that should be come at the zero but this is not that is not case. correct yeah we can discard from this and now next is the 18 is correct now 45 so 45 right. zero this is correct okay and 34 34 4, uh, four uh, this is also correct and 60 now uh, 60 not, yeah 60 is not correct because 60 should be come here because this position is empty so this is incorrect and 34 uh, is correct now and 45 is also correct 18 yeah this is also correct and 51 yeah, 51 is one, so one is also correct, and 60, 60 is coming from here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this option is also correct. A and D is the correct answer for this. Okay. Yeah. Like this, we have to check for each option. Yes, so this type of question, you have to check for each option. Uh, so yeah, this one. Okay, so this is related to the beak. Uh, four. Which of the following is representing the complexity to find adjacent vertices in adjacency matrix and adjacency list, respectively? Okay. So if we have a adjacent see matrix and adjacency list data structure for the graph so what will be the complexity of to find the adjacent of any node uh, sir it means uh, where ij is equal to one right ha huh, ij equal if in the matrix yes yes uh, where the value is one that is the adjacent, adjacent vertex yeah. excuse me sir hmm? Is it asking for a single node for or for the all single node? node? Single node. Single node. Okay. So, so, but it is saying find adjacent vertices. So we have to look for all the vertices, no, sir. I think it's no. talking about neighbors, all the neighbors. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like. Yeah, yeah. So no. we have to look for both uh, out degrees and in degrees. It's not specified. It's a directly graph or not. So which of the following is representing the complexity to find adjacent vertices so here adjacent vertices for any particular nodes we are asking for but all its neighbors right yeah neighbors so this info neighbor information uh, what is the complexity to identify so what are the neighbors Neighbors means uh, we are just checking the outgoing edge. If our graph is directed graph. A, B, D. The confusing one. So A is the big O, N, and B is the N, N, and D is the N square N. Okay. 
so in the adjacency matrix okay so this is the commonly structure for the adjacency matrix 0 1 2 3 4 to n and 0 1 2 3 dot 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 n okay this is the representation structure where we can we can find the who is the uh, neighbors so for identify the neighbors for example for what is the neighbor of one we have to traverse all the columns value to check okay so that means uh, identify the neighbors of any nodes uh, we have to traverse all the columns in our adjacency matrix so these are the order of n operation so we we need to traverse only this single row yeah, it's uh, same for uh, just a single node. Yes, uh, we are checking the neighbors for the single node. Okay. Okay. Sir, so, so when we are talking about edges and vertices, uh, we will only take account of outgoing edges, or we have to take account of no, incoming so for, uh, edges. Uh, uh, edges and vertices. What is the meaning of edges and vertices? If uh, this is a graph, those nodes are directly connected from this node, are called as the adjacent node. Directed, connected yeah. graph. We have to check outgoing edges. Yeah, if our mm -hmm. graph is direct directed, then we will check the uh, outgoing, outgoing edge. edge. Okay, where we okay. can. So if we are given a condition that uh, that the graph is directed, then we will only check outgoing hmm. outgoing. Hmm. Okay. Okay. And in question, no such condition is given. Yes, yeah, so both case uh, you have to traverse all the columns if data is given as a adjacent matrix. Okay. In the directed and undirected, both information you have to traverse the each column for particular row. Okay. okay. But in mm -hmm. adjacency list where we uh, store the data uh, for each vertices in the like table in that way one two. So what are the node connected from this tool? We, all nodes are mentioned in this here, in this list. Okay, in that way. This is the adjacency list. We basically, we implement using a dictionary. So you have to traverse. You, you can directly access the element using this uh, node. And that these elements are directly representing the adjacent nodes. So you can fetch this information in the constant time. Okay. Well, list it's constant time. Eh? Yeah. So if uh, if your data structure, if your graph is representing using an adjacency list, so in adjacency list we represent this information for uh, who is the adjacent node for each vertex. Okay. So this is the key of the dictionary, and this is the value which nodes are directly connected with this two node. Okay. So if you find uh, if you find out the uh, neighbors of these two, you can directly fetch this information using this key. Sir, if, if the question were like this, uh, print the neighbor of uh, print. Suppose if I want to print the neighbor for one, mm -hmm. and there are five and five values are there, then we will then it will be O of n because I will have to iterate through the list and uh, of course I have to access the key that is O of one. But in that case, it will be O of n, right? Yeah. If you want to traverse the node inside the list, uh, yeah. Uh, and if the, uh, we are like this uh, to print uh, the adjacent vertices, uh -huh. in that case. Yeah. So in that case, for example, if the, this node is connected to all n minus one nodes, okay. So in that yeah. case, you have to traverse all n minus one nodes to print. In that case, you can see that the complexity of will become n. Okay. okay, but here sir, we are just uh, getting I, this. Hmm? Uh, am I audible? Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, so my connection broke in between. So what I was saying is, I thought like we have to like find the adjacent uh, adjacency vertices. So in matrix, it's clear that it will take O n time. But in list also, like we know that all the, uh, that for example, a particular vertex, we have all the, all its adjacency vertices in the, corresponding list in the dictionary then but sir to extract those vertices we have to loop through the list right 
so again here also i think it should be o n right no no we are just talking about the neighbors uh okay uh, to find identify okay. the find the adjacent vertices so this information how what is the time to fetching this information what is the neighbors so how much time so i thought take? that we'll have to extract individually each yeah if we so want to if we want to traverse so same thing say if we are getting the list so we can say that all elements are uh, in the list are neighbors yes okay if we want to perform some operation if we want to process uh, some things for each neighbors then uh, it will become a uh, in the worst case, it it can be an order of n. Okay. So if our graph is uh, if our graph is a completed graph and each node are connected with n minus one m node, other nodes. So to find the adjacency rotation of a node, we can just uh, you know, look at the list and find its adjacent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Order of one ten, right? Yes. We don't have to traverse the list. No, no. So no need to traverse. So for example, uh, if we have a thousand nodes. Uh, yeah okay and uh there's only one nodes uh one adjacent node for this okay like this total thousand nodes and if we want to find out the adjacent of this node so there is only one nodes mm. okay and uh, so it is it will take we can find this information who are the adjacent of the that node this is a constant operation but if we want to traverse all the nodes and our uh, graph is uh, can, uh, complete graph so in that case, the complexity to traverse all adjacent nodes is n. Okay, traversing will take n time. Yeah. But finding the adjacent information is constant operation. Okay. Okay. But here in the adjacent matrix, we have to check all the value here, which which is one, which is representing the one, yeah. and uh, we can see this. So based on that, we can see that this, these are the adjacent. Okay. And next one is also a, related to this. Uh, we are given a directed graph using an adjacency list representation. For each vertex, we want to compute the set of incoming as UV. So this is also a uh, similar type of question of the previous question. Uh, so here, for each vertex v, we want to compute the set of incoming edge u v. Okay, we have a data structure adjacency list. Here, we want to calculate the incoming edge for each vertex. So, what is the time complexity for this? Okay, so C is the mark, most of the answer, 9, it is also near to this. Yeah, C is the correct answer for this. Uh, so, uh, for adjacency matrix, uh, for adjacency matrix, is give, uh, list is given for any graph. Okay, so that contains the information like 1, and the outgoing edge for each node, two and the outgoing edge in that way. But we want to find out the incoming uh, edges for each node. So incoming edge means this is a, so this one key and other value are the value. 
it is representing as is going from for example here it is 2 3 4 so that means edge is going from 3 1 to 3 1 to 2 and 1 to 4 in that way but our uh, aim is different we want to calculate the incoming edge for each node so that means first we have to initialize one dictionary uh, for each node so 1 2 3 4 5 in that way okay and then we have to traverse all the nodes all the values for each node we have to traverse the values for each word, uh, each key. And then we can figure out that how many incoming edge are coming for each node. Okay. So these number of values in the list is representing a total number of edge. Okay. So for uh, here, three values given, that means total three edge are uh, coming from one. So if we count this uh, value, total number of value in the list inside the value of each key that is representing total number of edge. Okay. So we have to traverse all the values inside the list. And after that, we can finalize this, how many incoming edge are coming for each node. So but we have to traverse all the key as well as we have to traverse all the value. So value is representing a number of edge and key are representing a number of vertices. So we can see that n plus m is the complexity for this. Sir, as you said, two for two, it's an income outgoing edges. So we want to check for the incoming edges, right? Uh, we want to check the incoming edges. So here, yes, one, two. Uh, so when we are reading this two value, so we can see that we can increment one. That means one incoming edge is coming on two from one from this. OK? So we can Sir, n is required because uh, uh, we have to initialize the uh, list, right? Hmm. That is why we have n here. Yeah. And we are also, uh, yeah, we are traversing all the values. Uh, so yeah, it will take n. So we have to traverse all the key here. And then we have to traverse also edge. But yes, uh, uh, traversing through the uh, vertices uh, will like it will anyway be included on the in the m right huh. total uh, calculation yeah. will become equal to the n mm. but still uh, one extra value for each we have to initialize with the dictionary yeah yeah for in initialization we have uh, n yeah yeah n okay so total time is required n plus so n. what initialization we have to uh, we have to create one data structure to uh, contain this information for oh. incoming Okay, so we have to create one dictionary for each vertex. Or one, not dictionary, inside dictionary, we have to create one key for each vertex. So total n vertex are there. Okay, and then, we, have, then we have to traverse all the edges. Well, How many edges? This is because, uh, sir, this n plus m is because we have to travel all the keys first, and then for all the keys, we have to go through all the edges of that keys. That uh, in that, in, yeah, right? in that way, uh, you can also uh, say that. So you have to traverse actually two loop. So for yes, sir. For a uh, key in dictionary. Okay, so for dictionary name is for example D. So key in D, and after that for uh, J in D uh, of D K. of K. Yes. In that way. Okay. Yeah. So total and, total. Yes, Sir, instead of using the second loop, if we write just simply the statement, if u in LV, like if we use this statement, then also we can find like if there's an incoming edge. Uh, if u, sorry, what if, are the, sir, we have to we, do it like for each instead, word, right? Instead of removing this, uh, instead of using that second for loop, we mm -hmm. can write this if u in LV, like we know the vertex, right? So what we can do is we can uh, just check the presence of u in that particular list by using the statement like if u in v. Uh, so simply we'll know that there's an in if it is then there's an incoming vertex. If it's not, but then uh, you have to check. So I think it will increase the complexity because, because you know the u. Okay. So for example, we have ten u. Okay. U is a vertex, and you are checking the all ten u in the each list. So it will the complexity will become n into l. Um, so I think it will 
because every time you are checking 10 value inside one list so it will become n square okay so you are saying that that if a statement will use the complexity on hmm. so that's why that oh, is okay, function okay. will also take some because complexity. you you are just saying that no, you is representing a vertex yeah 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 okay so for each vertex you have to check inside the list which one is coming like entire the list we'll have to check uh, then each list you have to check one by one that will become uh, either way we have to check the whole sir, list. Uh, or sir will it remain the same because uh, if yes. uh, like if we check uh, for each vertex it is checking the entire list in, in the if statement then also like if it finds the that vertex earlier instead of checking the entire list in the midway sum for example then it will return immediately like true so it won't check no, the entire no, we, uh, what we are counting we are counting the incoming ads okay so in yes, this yes. Uh, in this list any node can be present okay so you have to check all the vertex value inside each list yeah okay so uh, so which you are saying that if u in lv so that means what is the value of u you are taking so the vertex that we have to like find for this uh, for which we have to find the incoming edges and that v is coming from the outside for loop like for v in uh, for v in l dot keys uh, then we are using inside that statement if u in lv uh, return the uh, return true or like this but but it will show only the incoming edges for u we need yeah to that's find what we have to find right uh, all all for example, edges. if you want to uh, the incoming as for one, okay, then you are saying that you you are checking that one is present in this list, this list, this list or not in, the, in, the, in that case, in that way, no? So I'm writing my code in the, com the comment section. Wait, okay. what I'm saying, sir. Also. Uh instead of having to nested loop we can uh, write the, those four loops separately right now first creating the uh, dictionary hmm. and then uh, going through the piece and then finding the actually the list. main purpose is thing uh, you have to go through all the value inside the list yeah 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 okay so how you are uh, traversing all the value on the list so that is depend to you so it will take yeah maximum uh, number of uh, edges times so this is what i'm saying like uh, that that what i've written in comment comment section i think that this is same because uh, we have also we have to use if statement in the second for loop also for checking uh, so these things uh, actually okay one second uh, pranjal your code will only tell what is the incoming edge for you for we need to find for all the for all vertices what are the incoming edges we are not finding the incoming edge for one node in this question we are finding the incoming edge for all nodes so you will have to use another loop outside that is for you in l l dot keys and then run this loop which will again it's just um it's better to do to the, the the way the sir express uh, okay, sir. Actually, what I thought was uh, that we have been given a particular vertex, and then they are saying that find all the incoming edges. Hmm. Still, you have to tra traverse all the list M edge. I think for uh, Pranjal's uh, code to work, uh, we have to uh, make one separate dictionary. Uh, so for that, we need one another for, for loop. Then only we can. Uh, I think it is. That that way also we can do I guess. Uh, for P in L keys. So here you are taking. No, sir, sir. Now I got it, sir. Actually, sir, uh, what I was thinking is the question is saying that you have been given a particular vertex, and then you have to find the incoming edges for all the vertex. Like mm -hmm. now I saw that it's saying like for all the vertex, all the vertex in the yeah. graph, you have to find the incoming edges for all mm -hmm. those vertex. Okay. Yeah. So uh, if, if we are asking the incoming edges for one vertex, still it will take. Uh, total m time yeah sorry sir so i got confused actually okay, no issue. okay okay so this is a properties based question uh,
which one of the following statement is a true about an undirected connected graph so this is also a msq i think the mcq configuration is there So if you have any undirected connected graph, so which property is true in the option? The sum of the all degree of all vertices on this here. Sir, I am forgetting. What is that degree? Degree is how many no uh, edge are connected uh, on any vertex. Okay. Yeah. For one vertex, how many nodes are connected? That is the degree, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So this is for uh, under undirected graph. But when we talk about the directed graph, so there are two types of degree: in degree and out degree. Okay, A B C A B C A B C A B C. Okay, so the correct answer for this question is A B C. Okay, so all the first three options are correct. So just figure, check this. So C option in a completed graph, the degree of all vertex are equal. So what is the meaning of complete graph? If every nodes are connected with another nodes by the edge. Okay, so if we have a four node, so this is a connected graph. Okay, so here you can see that uh, A, B, C, D. Four vertex are there. So if all nodes are connected with all another nodes so that means we are saying that if we have n vertex so each vertex are connected with n minus one other vertex so degree will remain same for the all vertexes okay for the completed graph n minus one right degrees for each vertex in a complete graph for each vertex it will number of degrees will be n minus n minus one n minus one yeah correct so what is this n here? Is it the number of vertex? Number of vertex. Okay. Graph. Okay. And uh, so this C option is correct. Um, and B option, the number of vertices with odd degree is always even. Odd degree. It's a number of vertices with odd degree is always even. And uh, before this, also check with the option A. The sum of the degree of all vertices is always even. So this property actually every edge, every edge which are connecting between two vertices are contributing two degree in the all, all over degree uh, sum of the degree. Okay, so one degree for this vertex and one degree for this vertex. So each edge is contributing two degree in the overall degree of the graph. Each vertex has same how Okay, so if we are talking about the sum of all degree, so for this is complete graph. So three, 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 and three. Total is twelve. Okay, right. correct. So if if we are talking about uh, so uh, the if you see the edge wise, so when we are connecting one edge in between two vertices, so that means Two degree as two degree are producing by this edge. That's in the undirected graph, isn't it, sir? Yeah, undirected graph. We are talking about undirected graph here. 
okay so one degree for this vertex and one degree for another vertex so if our so uh, if we count our number of edge so for example if our graph have total seven edge so that means seven into two that should be the total degree of total uh, sum of the degree of overall graph two times the number of vertices number of edges a... number of edges oh sorry edges okay so you can see here one two three four five six total six edge are there so six into two twelve degrees the sum of all no degree so that means the first statement is true you will always find the sum of the degree is as a even value because we are multiplying by two for each as and the b option the number of vertices with odd degree is always even mm, this is also a property so for example how, how b b b b, ah, b option is okay okay, okay. so when we how, are uh, when uh, when some node is connected by the odd degree okay so for example this vertex is connected with a three another vertex so this is a this contains a odd degree so that means this also producing a three another odd degree for three vertex hmm. okay so this right. is a odd this also producing a three odd degree for another three vertex so same if you take in one so that is uh, also producing a one odd degree for another vertex so in that case if you count the all total number of this so that will become even okay. so we even right four vertices yeah, and vertex uh... is even. so here we are counting the number of vertex where the degree of the vertex is odd okay mm -hmm. okay so you can take any example yes. so five if you are just taking five or degree for this that means this are this is connected with the five another vertex so that means it is producing a five or degree for another vertex total will be six total will be six yeah. so this condition but, is also but, but, but is, vertices will be even yeah number of vertices which contains the odd degree should be even okay so these three property are correct the another two properties are the uh, reverse of these uh, the above uh, properties the sum of the degree of all vertices is always odd so this is opposite of option a this is not true the number of vertices with the even degree is always even so hmm. even it may or may not be even no no this is not correct uh, how? Yeah, it may correct. How how how, how 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 it is not correct? Instance of but it may or may not be correct, right? Like yes, yes, yes. Be... So you can see that uh, here we are taking this in degree. Sorry, yeah, degree as a even, but it is creating a two odd degree. So if we count the total, total yeah. number of even degree, this is a even. Uh, this is odd. Odd. Okay, but but these are odd, right? Hmm. Total number of vertices are odd, so this is a count. Right, right, right. Okay, now move to the next. Hmm. Just applying the BFS traversal on this graph from zero node. If any time you have uh, multiples of neighbors, select the numerical smaller value. So what will be the order according to the BFS traversal? We have to find BFS order, right? Hmm. But condition is given to select here. If you have multiple neighbors, select the numerically numerically smaller value of the node first. So if you know the concept of the BFS algorithm, you can directly apply the BFS traversal here. So BFS what means mean by travel cells. Sorry. What is meaning by travel cells? Travel cell means we we are simply visiting the node. Okay. Okay. 
we want to visit all the nodes okay so there are two algorithm for uh, traversal bfs and dfs we have learned in the week 4 so if we are performing bfs on the node 0 so what should be the order Zero one two three. I'll pick one. Zero one two three. Then five four. No four five. I think five four. Five, five four. four. Three and five are same level. Zero mm -hmm. mm -hmm. one two three five four. I think. Zero one two three five four. No zero one two three five four. This is a graph. Five will come before we, it will be consumed with like one only. So, uh, what data structure we use in the BFS? Q. BFS. Q. 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 Data structure. Okay. So we are just starting from the zero. Okay. And we are inserting this zero into a Q. And then what are the neighbors of this zero? One. One two, two three. One two. One two. One two three. One two three. Yeah. Okay, so that means we will traverse one first. There are three neighbors, so we will traverse one first, and uh, zero, then one, and after that, what is it? Uh, so this one will remove from the Q, and what are the adjacent of one? Five. 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 And three. Five. So five will be inserted here. Okay. Now one is traverse. Now which element will be removed? Two. 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 Okay, two removed. And what are the adjacent of two? Is four. Four. Which is this is four. And now three, three will be removed. Now there is no nodes are available which are which is not in the queue. And now five. Four. Okay. So this is the order. Okay. Uh, now the similar question. For the DFS, excuse me, sir. Huh? It will be four three five. Four three five. Yeah. Why? Zero, one two four three five. Because sir, four so two, one two four three five. But three we can directly traverse from the zero. Now there there is one direct edge. So in BFS algorithm, we always traverse the all adjacent node first. Then we move to the next level. So in zero, there are three neighbors. So one immediate two, neighbor will be mentioned first. So one, two, three uh, comes immediately after yes, zero. Yes, yes, zero. Okay. So then after completion of this level, then we have to traverse all the this node first. Then we can move into the next level. Okay, so this three cannot be come. A three cannot come after four. This should be come before four. So this is the correct. Okay, and next is a, a DFS for the same graph. There could be many, right? So same things. We are selecting the numerically smaller node. Zero one. Two. Zero one two four three five. Zero one two four three five. Yeah. Zero one two four three five. Yeah. So for this, so you are at zero. Okay, first. Okay, then. There are multiple uh, neighbors two, one, three. So you are you have to select the smaller value. So zero, one. 
and when you are reaching at the one you have to yes, once again check the na next neighbors level so these are 3 to 5 okay so you have to move to and then from 2 uh 4 and 5 multiple 4 and 5 so you have four. to move 4 then from 4 3 and 5 so 3 and then 5 so this is the correct order according to the dfs So how did go from three to five directly? So in DFS we complete the depth first. Okay, so if we are moving from zero to one, then we will check the depth from one. So from one we can move three, two, and five. Right. What, what value is the minimum? Two. 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 Now come at the two. Now check what are the neighbors which are not. Uh, is it is it not the depth first? That is a case three is the depth uh, deepest, no? It is depth first, but after coming to four, you have two options three and five. Now, right. when you in one, you have to go. Is it three or two? Three. 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 Two. Okay. So you will select this two. two, and from two we have two neighbors five and four directly connected, and which have the smaller value four. So we are coming four. at this, and from four we have two neighbors which are not visited three and five. So this is three. 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 Now we will reverse back, and then we will. Nothing is left. Therefore, we'll go one step up, one step ah. back. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah, this one. This one is little bit tricky. I think it should be B, F D. Yeah, it's M S Q. There are multiple. Okay, more options. B C as well. Option D is, I think, also true. I mean, also mark over.
sir is, is this d2g because of that uh, minimum value So are you saying something because you're on mute? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, one second, sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. So for uh, this option. For the first option, if we connect D and G, so after connecting of D and G, just try to apply the BFS algorithm on this graph. So if we are traversing this G and after that K, and we are completing the K depth first, we are completing F. Okay, so after that, there is no depth available, then we are reversing back and we are completing D. So this is like a edge which is already connected and they, this is not affecting the original uh, final tree. So that means if this edge is connected, still we can get this output tree using the traversal. Because if we have traversed the... No I I can mm -hmm. so if for example... This what is the approach? What is the approach? Yeah, if, uh, approach we are saying that uh, in the DFS tree, for example, if a graph is like this, A b c and d and c okay like this. if we are traversing this depth first a to d a to b and then we will complete the depth of this b to d okay and what is the next depth of from d d to c and after that this is is not will be reflected in the traversing so that means our tree look like this d uh, sorry a and then b then d then c okay and so this edge is not impacting on the tree if we remove this so still our output will remain same and dfs will be same yeah so similar way if uh, for example if in original tree if this dg is connected still our output will remain same hmm. because we are traversing the D from this side. If this edge is already connected, so our uh, output tree will not be affected by this. We are traversing. But uh, question uh, is asking which uh, edge can not be can an not edge. Be edge. Yeah. So this is a uh, this is not an answer. Okay. This, yeah, is, yeah. Yeah, this yeah. is a possible edge. Now Hello, sir. To, huh? If you add D and G, then I can get, go. I can directly go D. Uh, D. So uh, I, yes, I sir. The minimum, right? Which is the minimum? So here D is the smallest. I no, think. no, we are not check in DFS. We are not checking any minimum, minimum, anything. Okay. In DFS, we always uh, traverse one neighbors, and we traverse the next step, uh, the uh, neighbors of that neighbors. In that way, so if no, we are not, not the the minimum, right, you're taking, right? I think two are speaking. Uh, so earlier question you had told, so that's why you had taken a uh, smallest element. No, 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 no. In this question, it is not mentioned anywhere. Okay, so if it is not mentioned, I will not take. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that means if we are connecting this edge, still this tree is possible. Because the same way, if we are traversing uh, from G to K, then K to D. So this edge is not affecting the original output tree. So that means this is a, like a example which I mentioned this. If I remove this edge, we will get the same tree. If I consider this edge, if I same tree I am getting. Okay, 
but if we take the second option fd okay now you can see the is the depth hmm. so if for the example F fd is connected okay so for example fd is connected now if we are traversing from the top g to k okay so g to k then k to f if f to d. d is connected from the f so this should be come below this hmm. yeah from f to d or d to f from f to d f to d because we are traversing one uh, we will complete the de first depth completely then we will return back okay so if g to k is connected we will move to the k then k uh, to f is connected we will move to the f if f is connected to the d then this d should come below this f okay so that means we are completing the com depth first so this d is connected that means d should come below this f so this is no this is incorrect yeah it's because k is connected to d and uh, it will change hmm. everything yeah so yeah. if this edge is connected so this this d should not be coming in below this k and d won't be connected hmm. it will be covered by f yeah it covered so, by f so dg we are saying that uh, G is coming to K, and from K we can go to uh, K. K we can go to uh, F. Yeah, first. Yeah, for D G, mm -hmm. uh, if D G if we connect, okay, and from G if we are traversing K first. Yeah. Okay. We can uh, traverse because this is adjacent. Okay, so mm -hmm. if we are traversing K first, then we will traverse F first, then. now this part is completed we will return back then we will move to the another part now d okay now this d is already visited so this edge is not affecting this is already visited from k side but so okay. if i connect this d j i have a three possibility i can go i can pick yeah, you have also. you have another uh, possibility also but this possibility is also true You are saying that you you can uh, you can go you are saying that J to so you, this is the top. I can go D to J uh, J to uh, J to D. So that time it will be affect my gap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the second another possible tree you are saying that. Yes. Okay, but this tree is also possible, no? Yes, yeah, uh, it is also possible. Uh, yeah, I agree. Okay, but. this tree is also possible. Yes. So that that is that things we are saying that if we are yes. traversing K first, there is no standard. There is no standard way to check this one. Actually, if we are creating this tree, so this tree is representing the traversing node. Okay, so that means we are from G. We are traversing K first. Yeah. Okay, and then F first. Then we are returning back. Then D first. and after completion of this part we are returning back then we are coming to this side and this side then this side then coming in that way okay and then going back then so this is the flow of yeah. traversing okay. yeah yeah okay if we connect this d is, this is one of the flow of the traversing it, huh. it another another flow also can be there no? yeah another is also possible but if we connect this dg so this possible way is not affecting this or possible tree okay. is not affecting okay this, okay, okay Means this can also the be way generated. we should check we should check by connecting the whatever is required to check and then to check whether this flow is changing or not right mm -hmm. but in, okay. in the another option b this cannot be created if we are connecting f and d you cannot get this t if we are connecting okay, we are connecting fd in the original graph okay so you cannot find out this t in any way because uh, if this edge is connected so always this d will come below this f because when you are traversing from g to k k to f and there is one more to one uh, Or other ways to move available here. F to D. Okay, got it. Got it. Got it. K to D will not. K to D will not exist. Mm. And, and next, 
Yes, just a second, sir. DFS, we are going down. So, as you are saying, F to D can't be a H. So, if it was below, if D was before F, then we could have said that we, the H is possible. Means, Hello, sir. we should have to go to D. Downside. Here? Yeah. So, what you yes. are saying that, uh, what we will do? I'm saying that F and D are not connected because uh -huh. they are both parallel. And if 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 we are if we are getting an edge from F to D in the downward direction, then only it's true. I mean, in the original graph, it will be. Uh -huh. If in original graph, if this edge is available, so this uh, previous this traversal trees cannot be created in the same way. Yeah, that's what okay. I'm saying. So oh, if we will check for the next AI. Hello, sir. Huh? We can overall can say that if there is a cross edge, it will yeah, affect yeah, the yeah. DFS tree. Otherwise, it will not. Yeah, it cross uh, cross edge. Uh, yes. That will work if it is an undirected graph, which is in this case. Uh -huh. If it's a directed graph, then cross edges can exist. Yes, yes. Hmm. AI, if we will check AI. So AI, where is A? Uh, okay, this one. So this is also possible. Okay, yes, but yeah. if, we are, if we are traversing from H, J, then in that way, so we are reaching A, so there is no, no need to traverse from this side. This is also possible. And if we add C, B, so C, B, uh, if we are adding C, B, it's not possible, sir. It is not possible because if we are traversing I to H, then H to C, then C to B we can traverse first. Okay, so this B should come here, not here. Okay, so this is not possible. Okay, so B, if it was in, uh, down, down, down of C, then uh, if C, B is connected and we have already reached till C, then we can also move to D. Because they, this is connected, so this B should come in the tree below <coughs> of this tree. Okay. Yeah, the E H option. It is possible. Yeah, E H if we connect, so this is also a. Uh, this is E H. So same way, uh, if we are traversing this H C, and we are traversing H J E, so this back edge is not affecting this. Sir, uh, uh, we can say that uh, if uh, the nodes are uh, located in the same branch, then it is possible. If they are located on the different branch, then the, those edges uh, cannot be possible on the original graph. Uh, so, branch. Okay, you are saying that. In that yeah. Way. So this this is also. Yeah, it is. It is on the uh, a different branch. Uh, this F and D. Now this you are considering this two branch, okay? Yeah. Uh, so that is also pointing to the cross edge. Cross edge is also representing the same things. Yeah. We are connecting to two, two different branch. That is called the cross edge. So if cross edge edge is coming in the undirected graph, so that is not possible. Yes. So we can say like that also, right? Yes, yes, correct. Okay. And the next question is also similar for the BFS. So in that uh, HEJ that we connected, uh, it doesn't affect anything, right? Uh, it will be like in the previous question. Uh, which options were correct in previous question? D, uh, B and D. B and D, and all others were wrong. Yes, yes. Okay. So now this is the next question. Now this is based on the BFS. Similar type of question. So we will just reverse the options here. Reverse the answers. Of... I mean, sir, the answers will be A, C, and E here. For the uh, this twenty-two question. Yes, sir. A, C, E. Yeah, A, C, E is the correct. Hmm. So, how you calculated uh, quickly this one? Sir, 
sir because i did, in dfs we know that if we go depth wise here we go breadth wise so if in uh, the previous question like b and d were correct then here ac and e will be correct so option are same yes sir yeah. the options are same yes sir, that's why okay, i can okay. repeat <laughs> Yeah, yeah. that things I did not notice. Uh, okay, this and this. Both are complementary. Yeah. No, the here the option are same actually. Uh, so do not think in that. Uh, even the yeah, even in that same. case also, sir, sir, we can come up with this logic. Like in DFS, the those cross uh, the cross branches were not possible. Here it is. Uh, uh, here it is possible but that of the same root um, is not possible like the logic hmm. yeah. uh, level hello yes, yes sir. sir yeah okay so for this question uh, uh, if we check the dg so dg is connected this one okay now you can see the if this edge is uh, available in the original graph so that means this d should be come in the this level k and i in the before ha so that means in dfs we always the traverse always traverse the node which are the adjacent of the node okay, okay. if this d is connected by the g so that means this is also adjacent of g so that should be come on the this level k and i But it is coming after second on the second level. These are level. Ah, so level means we are uh, so here in this tree. So this is the first level. After that, we are traversing all the adjacent of G. So this is the second level, and then adjacent of the uh, their neighbors. So this is the third level. So you can figure out this after connecting this D G. If this edge is connected in the original graph, so this D cannot be come under uh, below this K. That should be come as a sibling of this K. Hmm. The same level, okay? Yeah. So this say this cannot be possible. So this is a correct answer. F and D. If we connect F and D, yeah. So this is possible. Because uh, if we are traversing G to K and K to F, and K is also connected with D, so that is not affecting the output tree. Okay, because we have already traversed uh, the F and D from K, so th this is not affecting. And A I, if we connect A I, yeah, this is also correct, incorrect. Uh, not, I mean, ah. Answer is correct. Okay. Answer should be correct. Ha. So I A is the connected edge. So that means this A should be traverse with the H and B level. Okay. Yeah. If it's in the same level, then uh, I mean, of H uh, and B, then it's true. Yes. Uh, if we are connecting the edge between two levels, hmm. so that is uh, not possible. E is coming at last level and uh, I is coming at level two. Hmm. So, if we are connecting any edge between any two level difference, hmm, two so level, yeah. edges on the same level can be connected, but at different level cannot be connected. Cannot be connected. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, this the is difference, the difference needs to be greater than equal to two. They can be connected by a difference. Yes. Yes. Sir. If we uh, Count the difference of the level. Okay, so that should be uh, lower than. So, for example, if we count the depth, so this zero, this one, this two. So that means we can connect the edge of the same value, same depth value. Or yes, okay. yes, sir. So you can connect like from D to H or D to B. You can also connect D to I, but you cannot connect D to G. D to D to G. Ha, huh, we cannot. So this difference should not be greater than two or equal to two. 
okay label difference should not be greater than or equal to 2 but can we connect this d to i yes sir yeah we can connect this one so this label difference should not be greater than or equal to 2 so cb cb if we are connecting yes we can connect this so there is no problem with this if the label difference is not greater than or equal to 2 then it is label difference must be 1 yeah 1 yeah. or 0 1 or 0 yes 1 or 0 huh, yeah. so 0 is like this and 1 is like this yeah yeah okay and eh so eh is also not possible because the label difference is greater than equal to 2 so you can also use this uh to identify okay yes, so a, ac it, is the yes, right answer for this greater than or equal to 2 is only for bf oh, uh -huh, only for bfs nothing similar to that for dfs uh in dfs there's no label wise actually we are traversing the node depth wise so we cannot apply that type of formula there so in dfs we can see that cross branches one thing uh, like. cross branch uh -huh. we can see oh the crossing is not allowed huh, huh crossing as is not possible okay so next one is Okay, find out the topological order. Same things. If we have uh, more than two choice, select the numerical numerically smaller value. So this it is. It will be mentioned okay, whether whether we have to select numerically smaller or not. If it is not mentioned, then we can. Yeah, you can any, select right? any. You can select any. Okay. So there are multiple uh, order are possible for the topological ordering. Uh, for but for this question this is mentioned that if you have multiple choice to select select the smaller value first whether in the question uh, always there will be one zero n degree node mm -hmm. if we are asking the topological ordering in the graph so that graph should be a DAG. Okay, directed as tag with, tag with one vertice having the zero one degree. Yes, yeah, so this is In the degree, property. Degree. This is the property of uh, DAG. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so correct. If there is no node available with zero degree, so that is not a DAG. Correct, correct. Okay, so my answer are there. One, two, four, three, six, seven, five, one, two, five, four, three, seven, six. Okay, so I'm getting multiple answer, but most of the common answer is one two five four three seven six. One two five four three seven six. Okay, let me check. So in topological sorting, we always start from the zero degree vertex. So just check that how many nodes are available with zero degree this time. No. One. Only one. Only one. Yeah, so we can select only one here. Now when we are selecting one, we are cutting these three edge. Okay. Now after cutting these three edge, now two is zero. Okay, and now four will 
not zero, but uh, three is also not zero. Okay. So now we are getting two. Okay. Then we will remove two. So now this two edge are also removed. Now this in degree is zero, and this will not become zero. Okay. So Only five is zero. Yeah. Now we will select five. Now from five we can cut these two outgoing edge. Now when we are removing this, so this four will become zero and seven will become zero. No, no, no seven, seven is not zero. Yeah, seven is not zero. Okay, so that is coming from four. Seven is one. Now next possible is only four. So when we are uh, selecting four, this three edge will removed, and after that this is zero and this is also zero. But six is not zero. So now there are two option, three and seven. So we will select three first. So three, and when we are selecting removing three, so that means uh, six is also uh, still containing a one. Now we will select seven, and then six. So one, two, five, four, three, seven, six is the correct answer. Okay, so this is the simple logic of the topological ordering. Every time yes. select the node, remove the node which have in degree zero, and once again calculate the in degree of all other nodes and check that what what is the next node to. Sir, in prior we have to first initialize the in degree of each vertex and then we can remove ah. start the sorting. Hmm. Yes, yes. Suppose. Suppose there is a, there is two node which is uh, initially which is having the zero in degrees, mm -hmm. then the different type of topological sort will be there, right? Yeah, right. so uh, multiple type of ordering of, uh, are possible. Okay. okay. If the if this condition is not given, uh, which is uh, mentioned in the question, if this condition is not given, then multiple answers are possible. Okay. The question may be as the condition is not given. And the uh, multi-select questions are also there. It it can be. Ah, uh, that can be. That can also be uh, asked in the oh, okay. question. Okay. 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 Which of the following order is possible? Sir, okay. the, the four has three in degrees and three has two in degrees, so it should be three four, right? Not four three. Okay, one second. I'm coming. Go back from. Four three. Four three is okay. Why it's not three four? Okay, I'm coming. Actually, uh, three is still dependent on four, so three cannot come before uh, four. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Four, three, two. Okay. Also dependent on outgoing edge. Okay. Right. Okay. Understood. Mm -hmm. Clear. Three cannot yeah. come. Clear. Okay. Okay. Now moving to the next. Yeah. This one. This is also based on the topological sorting.
six five six. Okay, can anyone uh, explain how you are trying to solve this? Yeah, first I try to uh, build the graph and then I uh, calculate the la labels. Okay, okay. So, uh, yeah. How to build a graph? Yes. So this. You're yeah, so this is much. also a uh, dependency based problem. So here uh, we will create the graph first and then after that we will select the all in degree zero nodes and we can complete at the one steps. Okay, so in that way, what are the number of days required? So, We can complete all the room which have in degree zero in the one day, and after completion of the uh, completion of the dependency, we can perform the same things on the next one. So for this type of question, just create a graph for this. So how we can graph create? So one must be revived before room three. Okay, so one. Yeah, what? What happened? Are you writing something? Yeah, I'm trying to writing, but my uh, writing okay. pad is not working. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what happened. Mm. So, how many questions are left? Only three are left. Yes. Actually, my writing pad is not working now. So I'm just uh, so you have already solved this. So just create the graph for this. Okay. Uh, based on the dependency. So here, if the dependency is given like room one must be rewired before room three and four. Okay, that means three and four is dependent on the completion of room one. So in that way, you can create a directed graph. And after completion of, uh, of the graph, you will get the DAG. And after that, you can start the same things of the topological ordering in the same way. And you can com uh, complete all the rooms which have in degree zero in the one day parallelly. So in that way, you can calculate the uh, minimum number of days are required to complete this. So for those rooms which have in degree zero will be yeah, you, can, uh, select, you can select. You can, huh? You can uh, select all the rooms which have indicated. So, what is the answer? Six. Six is the correct answer. Six days. So, mine is coming out to be seven, actually. No. So, okay, let me check. Can you draw? How to draw the graph exactly? Ah, oh, that's that's the issue. Yeah, that I'm trying to, but I don't know what happened with the that one second. You just tell, sir, we, we will draw in our notebook how to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, now working. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Uh, so we can simply uh, draw like this. Uh, so the, according to the first condition, uh, room one must be rewired before room three and four. So that means we can simply create this dependency according to this three and four. Okay. Yes. Now after that, room two must be rewired before room six. So two must be rewired uh, before six. Okay, so like this, six. This is the second. Three must be rewired before five. Uh, so before, uh, uh, before five. five. Okay. And five must be rewired before eight and nine. So that means eight and nine. And se six must be rewired before seven. Seven. And seven must be rewired before five. So four, five. Okay. Must be five. No, no, no. I will represent in the incorrect. Seven to five. Ah, uh, seven must be rewired before. Okay. Reverse direction. Yeah, I am uh, do doing correctly or not? Correct, sir. Correct, correct. Okay. Yes, correct. Yes, okay. You are correct. Eight, eight must be rewired before room 10. So, before 10. Okay, so. 10. And nine must be rewired before room 11. 11. Okay, so this is a deck. Okay. And now just check that uh, which node have in degree 0, 1 and 2. 1 and 2. Okay, so that means in the first day, we can complete 1 and 2. Okay. Okay, after removing this, now we have 3, 4 and 6. Second day, we can complete 3, 4 and 6. And after completion of this 3, 4 and 6, we have now 7. Third day, we have only 7. Okay. Now, after completion of this, <coughs> we have five. And then we are completing five. Now, both eyes are removing eight and nine. Fifth day, eight and nine. And now, after that completion of this, these are removed. Six and days, nine. ten and eleven. The so total, six days are required. Okay. Now, next one is this. Sir, can you go back to that graph? Okay. Oh, sorry. Huh? So you suppose uh, five and seven is almost in the same same level. No, no. What we the same day, you know? no, we are not checking the level. We are checking the in degree. No, no, but anyway, if we have modified the graph and 5 and 7 can come for this one day, no? 5? No, no, this is not possible uh, because we can Why start not? from 1 and 2, okay? So 1 and yeah, 2, we are I, I, doing the same way. After uh, that, we can remove the outgoing edge of 1 and 2. So we have only three vertices with in degree 0, 3, 4 and 6. Okay. Yeah, that's right. And when we are uh, selecting completion of this, so we can remove the outgoing edge. Now you can see that we have only one node available within degree 0, 7. 5 have in degree 1 from the 7. No, that's what I was asking. 7 and 5 can come on the same day, no? No, it cannot come because 5 is dependent on the 7. When we have to complete the 7 before 5. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Right, right. okay. Once we complete right. the complete the seven, then this S will remove. Now the in degree of five will come at the zero level, zero value. Yeah, I got it. Okay, then five we will complete. So in that we will complete. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is also next uh, based on the DFS. Uh, yeah, DFS tree.
So seven answer are there. C. C is the correct answer for this. And now discuss the correctness uh, of the problem. Yeah. So uh, if we are creating a DFS traversal for any graph, okay, and we are getting DFS tree. Let U be the vertex in G at V. Let V be the next visited vertex. Okay. So for example, if we are traversing a tree in that way, so we are moving B then C and then d okay and then we are coming from here e like then f so according to the t what is the traversal order a b c d then e then f so this is the order to traverse a b c d then e then f so here it is given that if u be a vertex in g and let v be the vertex next visited vertex so we are this talking about this or, or just we are taking sample no, we, are no, taking no. Some, we are taking one sample okay, okay so okay. here we are talking about that if we are tra traversing the vertex using the dfs and where the u is a vertex and v is the just next visited vertex after u okay so it could be anything b c c d d e in any any pair of this two consecutive visited vertex so you can be any okay. vertex right visited in the order uh, you you we can be any consecutive yeah. vertex which are visited mm -hmm. okay now check the option u comma v must be an edge in g and you get what you talking this u b I am just reading the option now. Okay. okay. U comma V must be an edge in G and U is a descendant of V in T. So that means he, this is saying that U comma V must be an edge in G. In the original graph, U and V should be connected by an, an edge. And where the U is a descendant of V. So that means in our original graph, uh, V uh, descendant. Uh, okay, yeah. So this should be connected like this. U. What does it mean of uh, descendant? Uh, this is a direct graph or undirected under graph. So that is directly right. connected. Undirected. Right. Right. Uh, in the undirected graph, which are directly connected by an edge. And it's if we are traversing, hmm? it's a dependent descendant. Descendant uh, of saying. Okay, this context, and U is a descendant of V in T. Okay, so in T, this is talking about the T. So that means U is a descendant of, of V. So that means uh, descendant means uh, the parent yeah. node parent node of the V. U is descendant of but V. But unlike the graph, don't have any parents and so. No, here we are talking in the undirected. tree. Here we are talking in the T. So okay, after tree. traversing of the graph, the tree is uh, created. Okay. So in T, yes. U is the descendant of the V. Okay. okay. Yes. That can be possible. Descendant means parent, right? You as a parent of yes. yes. Hmm. What is T here? Is it in another graph? It's no, no, this is a traversal tree. Traversal tree. Traversal which is generated descendant. which is generated by the DFS. Uh, okay. Traversal. Descendant means perhaps not child. Descendant means child per. How can we descendant of V. Uh, descendant descendant means child. child. Descendant means child. Child. Yeah, okay, I think so, okay, okay. Uh, so that means we can say B is the parent. B is the parent. Uh, but uh, this is always be true. U comma V must be an edge. Just check this first condition. Yeah. This is a, this is always be true. 
if no, two if two nodes are yeah. visited uh, one after another so this condition should always be true no because for example if we have a uh, if we have this ce option okay so for example this is a graph okay so cd so you can you say that uh, this e is just after visited by uh, by after the d but there is no edge in between if i if i create the graph okay i am just creating one another graph so a then b c d okay e f g h okay i, I can connect uh, like this so consider that this is a graph and we are performing dfs okay so this is not a tree i am just representing this as a graph so what will be the uh, traversal order so we will traverse from the a a to b okay and then b to d a b d d to f d f but after f we will reverse back mm -hmm. okay one back then we will move g. to the g so this here you can see that this g is uh, visited after the f but there is no edge in between okay 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 uh, so this g is just visited after the f but there is no edge in between so first statement is false according to this condition okay so this uv must be an edge in g so this is not true we can also select check the option b ub must be an edge in g same statement this is also not true now come on to the c option if ub is not an edge in g then u is a leaf in t yeah so comes on the this uh, statement what is a leaf leaf means last oh. note last note uh, oh. where where from oh, okay. after we cannot last note Last got it. Hmm. So that, that this is a true because we will always reverse back after the leaf node. Yeah, yeah. And at that time, this condition is possible. FG one, FG two. So here you can see that here traversing B E H, and after H, there is no possibility. Then we will reverse back to A, and then we will C. So then in the order, we will get H C. so after reaching the leaf node we will revert back and then we will visit the next uh, node so if u and v is uh, not connected by an edge so you will always be a leaf node so this condition is true because in each time when we are getting this information f and g both are continue visited node but f and g is not connected by an edge so that means this f should be a leaf okay so yes. here you can see the edge so we can say right ha so in h c there is no edge connected but f f g f g is also true g e is also true g e g e yeah mm -hmm. there is no edge but g and e will be visited one after another yes yeah. so this c option is correct and last option is if u h is not an edge in g then u and v must have the same parent so this is also not true uh, we can see in the same uh, explanation if this is not an edge so this is not required to have the same parent so the parent of c is a but h is e h is e right hmm so this is also not always true so here d f and g has same uh, parents d right ha huh? uh, here uh, this this f and g have the same parent okay but when we are visiting g and e so the parents are not same e parent is b and g parent is d okay you can okay. Be, you can you can be anything i thought that it do yeah. it is not this is not always true so after yes. uh, reversing back from the leaf we are moving from the another node 
So the parent will always be same. This is not always true. It will be two if it is a conjugate. Otherwise, it can't be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So move to the next last question. This is the last. Last question, sir. Ha. Ah, this is the last. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is based on the pre-post numbering. If you remember that the back edge, cross edge, and tree edge. So what is the condition of back edge and cross edge? So if we are performing DFS on the graph, and we are also maintaining this pre and post numbering for the each node, so which type of edge gives the information of cycle? Back edge. Back edge, yeah. So just identify back the edge. condition of back edge here. Back edge. Hmm. So what is the condition of back edge to identify? Identify by pre and post numbering. Sir, I want to ask something. Uh, suppose if we have post number, we we ran DFS and we had post numbers. According to the post numbers, there could be a topological sort. I'm not sure, but I think there is an algorithm for that. Like if I arrange according to the post numbers, a topological sort can be performed. Uh, okay. So what approach you are using based on this uh, post number? Uh, I will uh, I will arrange according to the post number uh, and whatever value uh, is which, mm. whichever vertices is associated with the post number I will just arrange accordingly. Okay, I'm not sure it is called something like K A and uh, scan algorithm. Can and, algorithm. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not sure, but I was just looking for it. Mm -hmm. You can you can uh, you can explore. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cancel algorithm. I will uh, also listen that, but I have to check once. Okay. So for this option, B is correct. Yeah, correct. B is the correct condition for this. So when, uh, yeah. yeah. So when pre V and post V. Uh, this range contains the value of pre u and post u so that means uv is the back edge and if the back edge is available in the dfs that means the graph contains a cycle so back edge means back edge means uh, the uh, one second if you are uh, creating a tree okay so dfs traversal uh, created tree like this. So if any time we are getting the back edge, so back edge means the upper, upper yeah. size. Uh, so from the lower level to upper level side edge. Okay. okay, so for this edge, so this is U and this is V. And we can, if we are maintaining the pre and post numbering for each vertex, so we can check that what is the pre value for V and what is the post value for V. And this range is containing a, uh, sorry, not P. Can you perform that? Uh, so this uh, pre V and post V contains the value of pre U and post U. Uh, you can just uh, see the B for a lecture like application. Huh? BFS, DFS. Yeah, BFS uh, application. Hmm. Yeah, here you can see the condition for this slide. Okay. 
so this back is uv so you can see if we are creating a dfs traversal for this given graph so this is like this and we are also maintaining this pre and post number in zero so this purple is uh, pre and green is for post and based on that we can see that so for example this red color edge okay so 5 to 1 5 to 1 so just check the what is the pre v and post v so u this is u and this is v so pre value is 1 okay and post v is 10 yeah. now pre of u and pre of, uh, sorry post of u both value are coming within this range 1 yeah. to 10 okay so if this condition is true that means that uv edge is a back edge okay and cross edge is the condition is that uh, if intervals pre u and post u can and pre v and post v are disjoint so for uh, cross edge you can see that this direction okay so this 7 and 8 so 7 and 8 range is totally different with this 4 and 5 so both are distant disjoint so if this condition is true for any edge so that means that is a cross edge and tree edge or forward edge so this first condition should be true if pre u and post u contains the range of pre v and post v so based of this information you can identify the type of edge and based on the edge you can check that this is creating a cycle or not for, the, for that question okay so now all questions are completed if you have any doubt in uh, any other questions you can ask now any more question or any other Say it was really a great session, like covering all these questions. It's like we did uh, like almost all the questions, like similar yeah, to that. Yeah, I, I try to complete all the topics. Okay. Thank you so much sir, for your time and these questions. Yeah, sir. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, nice session, sir. Nice session. Thanks, sir. Yeah, okay, we... uh -huh. for GA question number last, last question. I think. Week four GA. 10 question number 10. Deadline is over? Yes, deadline is over. Okay, 19. This one? Yes, last 10th. Mm -hmm. hmm. And that will graph G has 17 vertices. The sum of the degree of all the vertices in G is D. Yeah, Manan. Sir, I have a question I will post after this. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah. The number of vertices of even degree in G is K. Which of these values are possible? Okay. So this is also based on the properties. Okay. So here degree is given. Uh, so this D is represented to the sum of all degree of all vertices. Yes. Okay. So that cannot be an odd value. Yes, that yeah. was the order of program. Yeah, so this D equal to 41 is not possible because some will always be a even. Yes. Okay, so this B and uh, D option are incorrect. Now come to the A and C. And the what is the K? The number of vertices of even degree in G is K. Okay, even degree was to odd. Uh, number of vertices oh. or vertices uh -huh. so even degree uh, the number of vertices of even degree uh, in G is K okay and what is the G 17 vertices okay okay so total vertices are 17 and if we remove so for A and C option if we are removing 9 from 17 what number we are getting 8 right okay yeah. okay 8 so the according to the property the number of nodes which have odd degree should always be even 
so option a is looking correct according to this condition but if you check the option c where k equal to 10 that means we are a number of nodes which have in degree even in degree which are 10 now remove the 17 minus 10 is 9 now the remaining nodes are have in uh, yeah. odd degree or degree so that is not possible why okay yes. I, I substitute that with seven uh, uh -huh. seven so you can simply diff, uh, uh, diff, subtract this 17 minus k so yes. that is representing a number of nodes which have odd degree yes okay, that should always be even okay. so that is not true for option c <coughs> Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so option A is only the correct possible. Okay, another question is mock test. Mm -hmm. mock test so number four. Question number four. Yes, I got uh, 47, but how do I select upper limit? Okay, one sec. The solution for the mock will be released or not? No. No? No, no. This is... You have to solve, no? I have, I have to solve, but... Uh... How to check? Yeah, how to check and how to... You can... Answer uh, already given. Mistakes. This is a practice mock. Yeah, answer is available. Just try to solve first. Okay, answer is... You can see now, so you can verify your answer. Okay, so for this question, uh, here this is given the connected graph. G has a uh, total number of edge are given. Okay, 1, 0, 8, 1. So for these number of edge, what can we say about n? The number of uh, vertices in G. Yeah, okay. So there is a one chance. For example, I'm taking small examples. So, okay, I'm taking n uh, edge equal to 8. Okay. So what are the minimum number of vertices and what are the maximum number of vertices possible for this 8? So how we can calculate this? So for maximum number of vertices will always be 1 greater than this. If our nodes are corrected in serial way like. Okay, I have drawn some of the graph in 3 vertices and 4 huh. vertices but Okay, so if you are taking a eight edges, that means nine vertices should be there. Okay, single here. I am okay. So here, if one zero eight one edge is given, so that means one zero eight two edges are maximum possibility. Okay, got it. Okay, so this is the one boss upper bound. Yes. Lord and what? Lord. What I is the help. minimum? What is the minimum? Yes. In this course, 47 and into n minus uh, 1 mm. by 2. Yeah, for the completed graph. If our yes, graph completed is completed, graph. so n and into n minus 1 divided by 2. Yes, less than or equal. Yeah. Okay. Got okay. It. So, yes. Yeah. And other questions? Any other question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, question is. In the mock? Yes, sir. Mock. This one? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I think this is discussed on the discourse also. Yes, sir. sir. So, uh, I had the uh -huh. one uh, code is given. Okay. And this is this is similar type of the binary search approach type of. Okay. But here one code is given. Now uh, for uh, for this code, uh, yeah. What's your doubt for this? My doubt is sir. Uh, first we have to analyze the code, and uh, for each option we have to check uh, if uh, uh, worst case behavior is um, uh, worst case behavior is uh, following for each option or not. I mean, we have to check each option. No, 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 no. So just use the approach. Uh, so, uh, so for. To say analysis of this course, I think this will take much time. Okay, so here we are asking that which one is the worst, which uh, which option is representing the worst case behavior. That means it it is taking the maximum time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just uh, use the option value for this. So how the uh, that is uh, code is performing. 
for each value so for minus 1 is for the uh, x and 1 is the b just mm -hmm. give this value in the code and check that how the how, how many steps are required approx so this is not no need to calculate the exact just uh, approx okay so for minus 1 just when we when you are putting this minus 1 and b value equal to 1 so the first condition is not true if n equal to 0 is not true okay and for i in range 0 to b so b is 1 and this is also not included Ah, okay. okay. So that loop will also not run. So it will run one. Yeah. yeah, it will run only one times. Yeah, correct. One time only, no? It will run for zero only. Yeah, zero only. So it will be completed in the one step. Okay. In the next mm -hmm. step, L minus one. That means we are comparing the last element with the x, which is minus one. This is also not true. Okay. In one the one. next. Uh, in the next step for the for loop line number 12, for i in range 0 to b minus 1. So b, b is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. Now this loop will not run. Okay. When uh, starting range is 0 and end range is also 0. So that is not valid, valid range. Okay. So this for loop will not run. And same things, this if condition is also not true. Because minus one value cannot be a greater than this left part. X value is minus one. And definitely if we are uh, passing any index of the L, so that will always be come uh, between zero to 10 to the power six. Okay. So this minus one cannot be greater than to any, any of the list element. So this condition is also not true. So for the first option, we are not entering any loop and we are not running any uh, linear operation inside this code. Okay, so that means this is a constant time for this first so option. So you are going to say for minus one, we are not uh, uh, going into each loop and uh, implementing. Huh. Not minus one. Uh, if we are passing this value minus 1 and 1, minus 1 for x and b, uh, 1 what, for b. So what is b, sir? So b is the argument for this function. And okay. it is deciding the area where we need to search, actually. We, this is Based on the b, we are dividing the list. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So this is the, just one implementation is given. So just pass these two parameters and check that how many times we are entering inside the loop. Okay, so hmm. say if we are incrementing uh, b value to 2, so what is the impact? Our number of operations are increasing or not? Same for the 3. And, and when we are taking len equal uh, len of l, so this is n. So definitely for if we are taking b equal to len of l, so our this loop will run uh, line number 6. Okay, yeah. this loop will run for the for len of l one. time. Okay. And after that, the next line number 12 loop will also run. Okay. But uh, inside this line number 12, our if condition will not be satisfied. Still, this loop will run 0 to line of L time, N time total. What you are saying, if this condition is not satisfied. Uh -huh. So line number 13 is not satisfied for any value. Any, okay. Okay, here x equal to minus 1. But okay. our list contains the range from 0 to 10 to the power 6, positive value. Achha, we have positive value, right, right, right. Ah, okay, list have all positive, 0 and positive value. Okay. So this condition cannot be true, line number 13. But mm -hmm. still we will run for loop n times. n times. Okay, so for last option, our uh, this for loop will run uh, line number 12 will be run n times also and number six will also run n times hmm. okay hmm. Worst okay. Case. Huh. so this is the this last option is taking the maximum number of steps okay okay similarly for the question number nine yeah. here we are asking the least number of operations so for option Opt number three optimum parameter sir 
optimum parameter means least number of operation for okay. which option our code is taking least num number of operation so similarly the value of 1 b value of 1 this is taking like a constant time we are not running any loop mm. so we are comparing the option here which option is taking maximum time and which option is taking minimum time in 8 and 9 question so here also okay option c is correct right ha option c is correct because because are... the value is b equal to 1 so oh, no loop will run for this only this line number 6 will run only one time mm -hmm. after this 12 will also not run and no condition is satisfied so no recursive call will be performed mm -hmm. um, so only one okay. step one run we will terminate this sir one but one. if it is if it is not checking anything and it's simply like uh, passing all those if statement in for loops then sir it won't give us the answer like it's just simply exiting uh, yeah so for this list uh, our list containing a 0 to 10 to the power uh, oh, 6 yeah, element yeah. okay so, sir, if we it's are... not minus 1 then it will be a problem like if we choose yeah. any other number like 2 3 4 other than minus 1 uh -huh, that uh, it will create uh, so yeah for... okay so if we are passing a b equal to 1 okay and our x value is a positive value so in that case if we are entering inside a loop for so b for b equal to 1 we will not enter but the line number 15 will be satisfied okay okay then we will rec rec recursively mm -hmm. call this and search in the line number 16 Oh, okay, okay, sir. So this code was very confusing, actually. Uh, actually, here, actually, here, yes. this B value is denoting uh, that. So, in binary search, we divide the list into two half. Okay, in ternary yes. search, we divide into three part. Same thing, hmm. we are passing the B value here. If we are passing B equal to two, that means it will work like a binary search. Okay, so the, we are specifying the number of partitions basically. Like. Yes, yes. So that mm -hmm. is the uh, yeah, purpose for this. These two, so it will run for zero and one. I mean, range. Mm -hmm. So if v equal to two, then this loop will twelfth loop will run, and we will enter inside this, and based on that we will recursively call on the half part or maybe. Mm -hmm. so in that one. Okay. okay. Any other problem? No, sir. Rest all. I think it was discussed in their discourse. Okay. So if you have any doubts, you can. If you have any doubt remaining, so you can also ask in the forum. Any other? No, sir. Right. Okay. Enough. More than enough for today. Yes, <laughs> more than enough. For Twelve twenty-six. <laughs> 20. Okay. Two and a half hours. Four and a half hours. Which I prefer to be record, there. Record bro, today, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. It was complete. Today finished. is the highest. Yeah. Okay. So thank you so much for your time, first okay. of all. Like you have given a lot of time. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. So all the all the best, all of you, for the quiz one. Thank you, thank you, sir. We could find thank our you, weakness. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, so much. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, bye. Thank you, everybody. Good All the best to everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night. Right. Good night. Yeah, good.